What's going on, everyone? It's uh, Groovinator from RaidersLostFlicks.com, and I am here with my brother from another mother at the Place to Be Reviews. This guy right here, I'll point in the right direction. I, I can screw up with this every time. This guy right here, Etep <laughs> Wakuyan. What's going on, my brother? What is going on, my brother from another mother? How you doing this beautiful Sunday afternoon? Well, it might be where you are, where I am. It's damp, dark, rainy. I had hail this morning, some snow last night, but I would be lying if I said it wasn't beautiful outside. It really oh, is. It's really I'm, I'm nice. uber jealous, man. But we got a lot to talk about today and oh a really God, cool topic. And and I'm looking at the screen right now, and it's kind of crazy how like if you look at how our uh the pop filters on our mics kind of look like the same one. <laughs> Get off my mic. I <laughs> Get, get your own mic. Stop it. <laughs> no, you know what? I was never really a big fan of that song. And then this movie. This movie made me a fan of that song because it's been stuck in my damn head ever since I saw this. I saw this movie on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. You saw it a little bit more recent and kind of jealous of you, but Wednesday was the only day I could squeeze yeah. it in. But I really wanted to do this before this subject doesn't, you know, becomes irrelevant. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So yep. Here we are. Uh, but before I get into that, there's been some rumors going around out there that 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 me and this see I'm pointing in the right direction this time. That me and this guy right here has some kind of a beef. You know, I was on every single live stream with this maniac <laughs> last week. Um, there's never been a beef. There's never been an argument. There's never even been a disagreement, as far as I know. So uh, I think where that rumor started from is I have been looking for a co-host because. This guy streams eight days a week, and I stream like you know once every other two months on a Saturday or a Sunday. So I'm trying to just get some kind of a regular thing on my channel, and it's been an uphill battle because people my age have kids, jobs, other shows, other streams, other things like that. So there, there was never a beef. It's just that I'm, I'm trying to get some kind of a regular committed show to the channel. And, and it's, it's been the single hardest challenge I've ever had. But I've got some people that want to try out. And, you know, I, I'm thinking of some other ideas. Maybe I won't do a regular show. I don't know. But uh, I think that's where that beef came from. So just so you know, here we are. Double review We're, yeah there's there's no there's no, the only way to be beef between me and this guy is when we finally get to sit down together and actually hang out and one of us buys the other one a steak or something like that yeah, um that, steak. that yeah mm, steak <laughs> is as my stomach is rumbling right now because i ate breakfast a couple hours ago but yeah man um no this i i saw joker last night uh, i went to a 7 p.m show right literally like two minutes from my house which is very convenient um and i uh, jealous of you the two it, theaters that i live near are like a half an hour away it's a big deal going to the movies for me sucks i, I never get i never really get a chance i've been to the movies three times this year which mm. is more than i have been i didn't go what did, did i go to one movie last one or one movie last year one maybe i think i i didn't have time i mean but now did anything you know, come out last year i don't remember it's all blur <laughs> well i mean we had what uh let's see 2018 we had um infinity war oh that and, movie and black okay, panther yeah. you okay. know those, the, i mean just from my perspective like from because <laughs> I, I saw both the, of those two and i've already forgotten about them what does that mean what i did mean? i didn't get to the theater to see either of them because simply just did not have time and but no, there was more movies that came out than that. But now, because I focus on Marvel, it's so relevant to my my part of the zeitgeist that I'm like, what Marvel movies came out last year? And uh, we're talking about Joker, which is DC and this DC black label that they're they're kind of leaning towards now. And man, after sitting through all the MCU movies, this was a breath of fresh air, man. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> it was It was great. So now that you've seen it, would you say that this the, the outrage that 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 came before this? Would you say that most of those people that made such a big deal out of this movie look like complete buffoons at this point? Oh, they they are the clowns. <laughs> they 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 did send in the clowns, and it was all this access media. I mean, I so watched bad. It. Like seriously, I, I watched it, and my wife and I. I'm like now. I know, you know, I consider, like I said, I call my, she gets mad, but I call her a normie. I'm like, you're like a casual fan of this genre. You know, like me, I'm like fully immersed in this, you know? And she was like, I asked her, I'm like, now, cause she, you know, I've talked to her about all this stuff, this controversy. I'm like, what did you, you know, when we were done watching, I said, what did she goes? 
I don't know what people were worried about. She's like, I, you know, she goes, we've watched much more violent right? movies. Movies with- have come out in just in the past decade. I, I, but I mean, even back is like far back. Okay, this this movie we were guessing takes place 82? Something it's like 81 early? or 82. 81 could- or 82? I was thinking it was 79. Well, actually, because the, but- the, the New York garbage strike was featured in this. It's Gotham, but it's New York. You know, okay. It's- yeah. So they model it, model it after New York. I, yes. They model it after a lot of movies, which yep. I'm okay with. And we'll, we'll get, we'll get to that in the, in the spoiler talk. But right now I just wanted to address some of this controversy because a lot of the, the big um, movie review uh, sites that I follow have been addressing this as well. Even people like Chris Stuckman who just avoid controversy like mm-hmm. the plague is like, yeah, I think he said it best. Actually, he said it best. Of course, I'm I'm a big fan of uh, Jer- Jeremy Johns as well. Mm. But uh, Chris Tuckman, he had he had said, you know, we're still having this conversation, even now. You know, how many times have we had this conversation where you're blaming video games, yeah, movies, and music on the problems of the world? <sighs> Blaming and it music. never holds water. It just keeps no. going on and on. They, they, no matter how many times you keep bringing this argument up, you can't blame media for not raising the world properly. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you're like I'm a parent, and if you're if you're allowing the media and television and pop culture to raise your children, then you're doing something wrong. Um, do I let my son watch Marvel movies and Star Wars and all? Absolutely, he's four. He absorbs it. He loves it. It's fun. Now, would I let him watch this? No, this is this is not this is not one of those movies which he's sitting in the living room right now watching The Dark Knight with my wife, which I went and rented directly after. Right? We yeah. This. There, there were elements of this movie that that reminded me of Dark Knight, mm-hmm. and we'll get to that too. But, yep. but yeah, it just it, it, this this outrage culture. I mean, all of the things that they predicted would happen or they feared would happen did not happen. No. I and think, if they happen at this point, it's going to have been past tense. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, this is, th- it, was, it was faux outrage, a, a faux crisis, a faux movement. I mean, there was no water, no validity to any of it. And like I said, I sat in a the theater last night and I never once had any apprehension about anything. I mean, basically, I live in a small town. It's a very small, there's 8,000 people. Mm-hmm. Uh, one theater, you know, um, and we walked in right at, like, right during the preview, sat down. You know, I kind of just looked around. I'm like, it was like three quarters of the way full. It's about uh, a hundred, hundred people or so. So I mean, it, nobody was like. Yeah, I live. Antsy. I live small town too. Land of Lakes is right outside of Tampa, and okay. uh, the the theater that I went and saw it at was actually in Wesley Chapel, which is pretty upscale. Mm-hmm. And okay. Yeah, no, I mean, I went on a Wednesday, so I mean, yeah. I, I went during the old people shift, you know, so, <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the old people shifts anyway, but there there was at least like a handful of people in there. I think mm-hmm. all, all of them were like guys my age, and they were yeah. genuinely happy to be there, and and I, yeah. I like going to that particular theater because they really enforced to be the fuck quiet there, you know, mm-hmm. so. I, <laughs> yeah, there was no, there was no noise or anything, mm-hmm. uh, no, no obstructions, like, the, like I said, it's it's like the theater I, I've gone to ever since I was a kid. There's something outside the door. I think it was the kid and the dog. Um, you know, they pretty much just police themselves. So it's like it was it was quiet during the show. There was no disruptions, nothing. There was no police presence or, you know, National Guard there, which is, you know, kind of funny in the town I live in to even consider that, you know, at a movie theater. Um but, I think I'd mentioned it on one of your streams, but I don't think I addressed it on my stream because I don't stream as often. But I, I actually experienced some of that that outrage mob stuff uh, in 1992 during the uh, the body count uh, cop killer drama. Oh, if you remember that, I do. I and do. I, I went and saw uh, cop killer propane exodus dri at mm-hmm. uh, the Vic Theater in 1992. It was like I want to say early early summer, maybe late spring. Mm-hmm. And they had cops outside the Vic Theater in Chicago picketing in full uniform, like full dress blues, Oof. you know, with the checkerboard hats and shit. Oh, yeah. Just oh, stand yeah. out front. Now, the only violent thing that happened in that show was some asshole did a stage dive and forgot to get caught, you know, oh. and he he <laughs> hit the floor like <laughs> But yeah, unless you consider a mosh pit an acts of violence, yeah. uh, there were there was none of that. It it just went to prove the the fact that a lot of this stuff is just drummed up drama for the sake of yep. headlines, you know, even back then when you didn't have the internet outrage culture yeah. or, or or fishing for outrage clicks like you do now, 
yep. it was going on. And I mean, that particular song, I mean, it's it's iced tea. I mean, yeah, <laughs> there were rap songs out at the time that were way, way worse than that. But that wasn't even a rap song. That was his metal band. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. I, I still have, you know, the NWA cassette from, what is it, 85, uh, you know, straight out of Compton. And that had a little song called F the Police. And mm -hmm. now for those of you who don't know me like Adam does, my uh, my family is filled with uh, with police officers and, uh, you know, military people. And I myself have a criminal justice degree, you know, but you're a kid. To me, it was like it was just a song. And I, I understood the why because, you know, I, I'm a student of history. But yeah, this this controversy is nothing. It pales in comparison to the stuff like that. And no, there was no there was no violence. I, I just I, remember growing up, man. That was just that was always the same thing. Yep. It was the, it was the heavy metal records for a long time, and then it was the rap stuff. And they actually had a rap summit around that same time yep. that went on. And and it, it, we, we've done the video game thing to hell and back. Oh. And it just seems like whenever there's a mass outrage of, mm -hmm. of violence that we have to find a, a scapegoat and it's never people yeah. or the fact that, you know, the outrage news is, is constantly polluting people's minds 24 seven, uh, you know, on a, on a horrible scale. I mean, I've proved that yeah. before I, I live in hurricane central and, <sighs> You know, when you watch the local news here, it's like, well, you know, you you might want to maybe not go out today. Uh, you know, if you have a few things stuck up there. And then meanwhile, CNN, it's the end of the world. Oblivion is coming. Oh, my God. Florida is going to fall off the fucking continent and sink into the ocean every yep. time a hurricane comes. So that, oh. I mean, that's just proof right there that, you know, outrage is a business after all. So it is controversy creates cash and that's what that's what all these people are banking on and i'm sorry you know this movie's cleaning up at the box office yes uh, it is and it, it makes me so up. happy oh i want to acknowledge the chat real quick yep. uh stevie j reviews stop by he's on his way out thank you so much for stopping by we got mj in the house thank you stop by mj and we've got uh tony tony alec uh <laughs> left this little comment here which i thought was pretty funny <laughs> he's, so. he, he's he's a great dude man tony tony's a great dude he's funny as hell too so but yeah this is an interactive show so if you guys have questions yeah. or whatever uh fire them off we'll, we'll be more than happy this is a spoiler filled review so we will be talking mm -hmm. about every last detail and with that we're just gonna move right the hell into it i think we've all talked about the outrage and and yeah. i am glad that this movie is doing as well as it is because it Hollywood needs a shakeup right now. They need to it be does. reminded that, you know, it's not the responsibility of filmmakers to make the world proper. You know, that that's no. that's on you. And and, and and stop blaming the media for your faults. You know what I mean? If yep. anything, you need more escapism. You need more entertainment like this to let mm -hmm. loose once in a while. So Yeah, that and that that's where it really got me was you know, they, this is, this is a brilliant, it's a brilliant, I mean, and of course, Todd Phillips, you know, they, they attacked him, um, for his comments about, he can't make comedy anymore, which is true. I mean, look at guys like Dave Chappelle, mm -hmm. I mean, Chappelle and another one that, that came up recently with Mel Brooks has been, yep. has been saying that too. And yep. I feel bad for Mel Brooks. In fact, I've, I've made a point lately to go and collect as many of my favorite mm -hmm. old Mel Brooks movies as possible, because I'm afraid that society is going to deem them, you know, problematic and you know take them off the shelves to where i can't watch them anymore so i made a point to have these things on blu-ray just for that reason i'm adjusting my headset here i uh yeah I, you know if you don't own blazing saddles already you should probably go buy that <laughs> shit because i can guarantee you I, i'm shocked there hasn't been mass protests like there was like i said with like straight out of compton and stuff like that where they're out smashing copies of it because it's problematic or it's racist i'm like do you realize that what's his uh cleavon little wouldn't I, is that was that his name that played yeah. uh, the mm -hmm. sheriff? I I don't believe that he would have been. And in that he's movie. so funny in that. Oh my he god! Is. I don't so believe good. he would have been in that movie if he would have thought that it was done with a malicious intent. No. So you and know that's, that's the thing that works about movies like that. It's like yep. if if you make fun of one group and only one group, then yeah, I, I can see the problem. Yes. But if it, in a Mel Brooks movie, he makes fun of the irony 
of yes. these stereotypes. And in the particular scene that I'm thinking of, he he flips that around. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's it's like it's like well, you know, making fun of one group, and then that group flips the script and makes yep. makes the other one look like asses. Yeah. And it just it just goes to show how ridiculous this whole thing is. It, it, it's it's the it's making fun of the outraged for the sake of the joke. You yep. know, and and that's that's where it works. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but. Oops, uh, yeah, Salvador's in the chat. <laughs> hey, Salvador, welcome, hey, man. Salvador. On he's, watching on, uh, no, he's watching on the toilet. Duh, <laughs> duh, duh toilet. toilet. I, I was making way too much of that. I'm like, DOH toilet. This must be code. <laughs> he's this trying to figure out an something. acronym. I know this. This means something. This means something. What was that? Uh, UHF with the plate, the mashed potatoes. This means something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's making fun of uh, uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I, it, I love that scene so much, man. Mm. I just like it. Oh, God. The, the UHF. We could talk about UHF all We're day. Gonna, that's a watch party. That's That has to be a watch that party is. at some point if, if, they, if they throw it up on the, the YouTubes. Yep. So. Um, but yeah, this so like opening this movie up, I mean, with, you know, uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, God, what, what, what a brilliant performance i mean this guy just af after that whole weird i'm gonna be a rapper and i'm gonna be i'm gonna retire thing, i know i was I mean, so like i i just because i always thought wow. he was good you know yeah. it's like i remember first noticing him in um gladiator all right yep. and then he was in signs which i know a lot of people don't mm. like signs i'm one of the people that do and i enjoy it that makes me weird so what whatever now that makes two of us then so <laughs> I, I can watch that movie it, it's got some good world building in it mm. and a lot of really good tension and build yeah. up and, and suspense that that worked it was, it was before we got tired of him night shalom alama ding dong but uh he was good in that too you know and mm. then yeah the, the whole the whole thing on david letterman and all that and yep. I, I get what he was trying to do i think he was trying to do that kind of like uh, andy kaufman type humor yeah. You know where where you're going for the long con, but I think mm -hmm. it backfired, and I think he realized it too. You know, it's like him and I think his cousin or a friend of his came up with this idea to do this and not tell the press what was going on and make everybody speculate. And then I remember seeing that movie. I'm still here, and I'm like, mm. well, that was dumb. You know, it's it, 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 like it was Casey it, Affleck. It was Casey Affleck. That's right. Yeah. Damn it, pre Oscar Casey Affleck. But. Yep. But yeah, it was it was just a dumb movie. It, it was kind of like a Sasha Cohen Baron. Baron. Sasha Baron Cohen. Yeah, that's. I am not a fan of his. No, the, I, the only movie I tolerated him in was um, Talladega Nights. Okay, uh, yeah, because I, I loved that movie. Um, you know, I did. But so was my so, sister. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Phoenix in this role, I, I was. I wasn't hesitant with him playing the Joker. The only thing that I had any trepidation about going into this movie was there's no Batman. What are we going to do with this? You know, it, mm -hmm. it, can, can you do a proper, you know, the Joker origin story proper without Bruce Wayne? Well, we, we got a little bit of a very, very young Bruce Wayne, not to jump just ahead, enough but, to carry the story. Yep. Yeah. Just, just to kind of lay the groundwork mm -hmm. from where this movie is. Um, you know, we met, we got to see Thomas and Martha, you know, we got, and, and it's funny, the, uh, the guy that plays Thomas Wayne, I can never remember the actor's name, but he's always like a bad guy or a jerk. Like he was the, the bad quarterback. He's got that bad. He's got that asshole face. Just, he does. He was the bad quarterback. I can't even do it. He, it's like my, my face had to go like this. It's just like this, like <laughs> miserable, just mm, man. miserable asshole face. He's just the miserable asshole face guy. That's what I'm going to call him. So, uh, let's see. M A F. G the, the mag the the miserable asshole face guy he was just no he, he played a good Thomas Wayne and it's um Phoenix's like his his whole world was you could you could see just you know from the from the opening scene he gets he gets you know they showed it in the previous him getting his ass kicked by those kids that they stole his sign and you know his boss doesn't believe we're getting right into spoilers here I mean uh so it was just uh you know, his boss not believing that the sign got stole. Like to me, I'm sitting there going, why wouldn't you just tell him? You know, they, they stole your fucking sign, dude. They kicked your ass and stole your sign because they were just dick kids. That's what they did. You know, and they beat the living shit out of this poor guy. Right. And I, and I got the impression from that boss that, that told him that too. He was one of those guys that just like probably has about five accounts and God forbid mm -hmm. he loses one. He's going to go out of business. So yep. he's going to take the side of the guy with the account over yeah. literally anything else. It's like he had that conviction in his eyes. Like, 
yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, I know, I know, man, but but fuck yep. you, you know, my business comes first, you know, fuck you, um, fuck you, yeah. So <laughs> that's what it comes down to. That but. was that was basically it. So. And, and somebody called that. It's like what? It, what? It, what was it called again? It was ha 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 or uh, something like. It's like a temp service for clowns. Mm-hmm. I can't. I can't remember the name of it. But yeah, it I was, wish I could have uh, had a job like that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you? God. A temp service for clowns. Oh my Can god. You might say, "Yep, we got. We got to call the temp service." Why? What's up? Uh, we need a clown. Yeah, you know, a temp service, and the, the little, the little, uh, the little person clown there. Yeah. So it was, oh, Sal, it was called Haha's. Haha's, that's it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, man, the uh, it was. He was weird, even for being a clown, and I'm I'm not a fan of clowns. I'm not. I, I'm yeah, not a like, lot a lot of people aren't. I mean, he, even you and I grew up with, where clowns were like a staple on TV. Yep. They they weren't really considered to be super creepy until. Yeah. It. Yeah, you know, it, it the miniseries I think mm-hmm. ruined clowns forever. It did. Well, a little bit of that, and John Wayne Gacy didn't help things either. You know, so <laughs> because there was also that. You know, they made it through. You know, killer clowns from outer space without that casting aspersions <laughs> on the clown population. And uh, there was another one. Um, it's a really obscure horror movie which I'd really like to watch. And you might be the kind of person that has seen this, but it was called Clown House. Um, I didn't see Clown House, but I did see the one with Tiny Tim in it, where he's he's a clown in it. And I've uh, never seen that one. Oh my god, it was on. I don't remember the name of the movie right now, and I'm not going to look it up. But uh, I'm just too lazy to bother with it. But uh, <laughs> it was it, it was on Joe Bob Briggs' uh, Last okay. Drive In, which is all on right. Shutter, and I watched mm-hmm. that show all the time. And there was a, a horror movie. It wasn't a terribly good horror movie, but it was the only movie that that Tiny Tim had starred in. And he's a clown, and he's fucking terrifying. I mean, he's just an absolute wreck, alcoholic, and then he's playing a character in a movie too. You know, so it was. Uh, did he have his little ukulele while he's doing? Oh <laughs> because if he he's did that, singing, would have been even he's, he's delivering soliloquies and poetry and prose, and I'm just like, this is um, this is the pattern for the Joker right here. I'm wondering if Joaquin Phoenix actually watched that movie before he like he just to get ideas for stuff. You know, because yeah. I, I I do appreciate the fact that. He brought his own thing to this role. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he definitely oh, he had a, a vision in mind, and I think him and Phillips hit the ground running with this. They really did. Yeah. They 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 had a vision because I, yeah, I remember I was one of the people that first said it's like when they're announcing a Joker origin story. I'm like, oh, this again? Really? Mm-hmm. Is this what we're gonna do? We're gonna do another origins movie? Oh man, you know. And the, but then after seeing the trailers, I'm like, oh hey, so this is like a. It's like a one-off story, and, and yeah. you know, I've mentioned a couple times I don't read a lot of comic books, but I have read some of the one-off comics, like you know, The Killing Joke and Gotham by Gaslight. So mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, so they're gonna make a movie version out of one of those. I, I'm, I'm on board. You know, I just I just rented The Killing Joke last night. I haven't got a chance. I was gonna watch it, but I didn't get. I, I fell asleep. But yeah, um, yeah, this. I, I mean, could you world build around this movie with the way they did it? Absolutely. Um, do they need to? No. I don't want them to because I don't want them to water this down at all. I don't want to see this brilliant rated R tour de force turned into this paint by cinematic universe, yeah. formulaic cinematic universe. No. Um, now with the detective, what are they doing? Detective Batman's the Matt Reeves trilogy. I don't know. Really is that what they're calling it? I don't know if it's detective Batman or the Batman. Um, uh, yeah, I think it was the Batman. Maybe it's detective yeah. Batman. I, I think I think Bat- they're basically Batman Pikachu. <laughs> they're based on the, the Detective <laughs> Batman comics, maybe. Um, if if that's the route they're going, but I, I don't, I don't see this fitting into that at all. And you know that the only issue I see is okay, are they going to include the Joker in that eventually? Okay, so now they're going to recast him again. Well, I mean, do I want them to recast Joaquin Phoenix? Not really, because my God, outside of Heath Ledger, I don't think I've seen a more psychological like introspective approach to the joker that joaquin phoenix portrayed in this movie i mean uh, the downside is is if you're going to do another uh, uh batman movie it's going to be hard to have batman without joker as some kind of a presence so yeah yeah it's like you said do they recast him again do they bring back joaquin as in an older fashion or mm. maybe explore some of the other uh villains that haven't been exploited by the uh the dc universe in recent days that would be what I would rather see than another. And it's not that I don't want to see Joaquin Phoenix in this role. Again. No, uh-uh. I, I do. But, 
but I just don't want to see it watered down or homogenized to fit into that new DCEU that they're going with. Um, with uh, this is uh, this is a great comment. And yeah, those of you who don't know me, I, I did work on FM radio for six years because I obviously have the face. He did it. FM. The only thing I did is I worked for Armed Forces Radio on, on a ship. So I had a very cat, literally a captive audience. And, <laughs> and, and I read from a very strict script. So he did more ad lib. So <laughs> I, I've been suspended from the air. I, oh, okay. I did. I, I did a bit. Uh, this is in my. Oh, you broke your cherry. No. <laughs> I did. I did. I got suspended from the air for two weeks. I was. Uh, I was Daisy Fresh and with no radio experience. And about two months in, I decided to do some editorializing on a Saturday night show. Um, on my kind of like my late night thing, I called the flip side. And yeah, my program director uh, took. Uh, what would you say? Uh, took took notice of that. And I never had any complaints on air. Uh, from any of the audience, but yeah, so they booted me for two weeks. So yeah, I, I have been that, uh, you know, the little rebel without a cause on the radio. Well, with me, I studied to be a print journalist. And then uh, when I got the job, the guy that I was supposed to train under uh, went AWOL. So oh. I, I inherited all of his jobs, like all of the jobs. Here I am an E3 and also a department head because there was literally nobody else to do it. So I, I had some guy come in and show me how the console operated and then they're like, okay, go. That's pretty much been my entire life. It's like baptism by fire. So yeah. that's the extent of that. And I did do a, a Star Wars podcast back in 2010. So I, okay. I, I have a little bit of experience with that too. And and they and I, and thanks for that compliment, by the way. I was I have yeah, been told that so. before, but it always makes me feel good when I hear it. So we strive to be professionals here. So we try. We do but try. No. But no, so, you know, back to the, the Joker, you know, because they did just sign that. And this is this is what worries me, because DC has been on a great uh, trajectory since Wonder Woman. They're you know, on the mend. Yeah, they are. Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Shazam. These movies were entertaining. And I, I, I would dare to say vastly uh, superior to some of their Marvel counterparts. I agree. Um, yeah, it, I, I didn't see Aquaman, but I did see Wonder Woman. I was like, oh, wow, I could take some more of that. That was one of the more refreshing superhero movies I'd seen in a long time, and a lot of it echoed, you know, uh, Superman, like like the original Christopher it, Reeve Superman. Mm -hmm. It just felt like that. I'm like, this feels like a yeah. true hero's tale, you know, and yep. I think I think DC it would be it'd be in their best interest to to make these these one offs like this and not make mm -hmm. everything all connected like Marvel by not yeah. copying them would actually accelerate them. Yes, and that's the problem I have is like this movie is, this movie was amazing. So we get J.J. Abrams coming in now and signing this two hundred and twenty million dollar deal with Warner Brothers, and you know he's bringing bad is it bad reboot or secret hideout with them, and it's like don't don't turn this into star trek don't turn this into star wars because dc has had enough issues as it is and with this joker movie this is kind of their uh they're almost like their redemption song uh to me it's it's killing at the box office it's proved that rated r superhero movies not see or not superhero movies, but comic book type movies. And this is not really very comic bookish. This was that's why I really enjoyed it so much. Was it was just so dark and gritty, but it wasn't uh what's his name? Snyder. It wasn't Zack Snyder. Right. Yeah. And and they, they had mentioned that in Red Letter Media as well. Mm -hmm. They said, you know, you can do dark and gritty, but then they, they still want to squeeze in all the bullshit explosions and, and yep. CCI special effects and all that. It, it, it this this feels more on keel with the uh, uh, the the Nolan movies than you know the yes. Zack Snyder side of DC, which is good because mm -hmm. that that Nolan really re revitalized DC in in a major yeah. way, and you know it was refreshing because I I was fucking done with Batman, and then it was it was my mom of all people that convinced me to go see Batman again. She's like, I don't know, I think this one might be good. I'm like, come on. You know, I'm mm. like, have you seen the last three Batman yeah. movies, you know, and then I went and saw it and I was like, oh, I get it. So they're going to do it like if if Batman was a real guy, how would things play out? You mm. know, and and, and I, that movie was decent. But then the Dark Knight was just this whole other fucking level. Whereas if the Dark Knight was a one and done movie all by itself, it, it can exist all by itself. In fact, that movie's story is so good it could exist without any of those DC characters even being in it. You could replace all of them with generic mm. people and it still would have worked. 
It was just yeah. a compelling story. Yep. Yeah, and that's that's what this that's what this really was to me. It was Arthur's relationship with his mother, um, and just the way he interacted with the people around him. And that is the thing. That's what made this. I loved how grounded this movie was. It was so based and just red pilled in reality, man. It really was. Uh, because you didn't get all this. Like I said, it wasn't cartoonish. There was not one part of this movie where no. I was sitting there and going, well, there was, there, I kept waiting for them to do that moment. You know, it's yep. like, they're going to do a nod or they're going to do kind of some kind of a joke or something like that. And, and mm -hmm. it, it, for a movie called Joe, that's what's so, what's so poetic about it. for a movie called Joker. Yeah. There's very little humor in it at all. No, I, I did laugh audibly a couple times. Um, <laughs> which scene which scene made you laugh? I, I, I can't oh. wait to tell you what mine is. <laughs> well, first of all, when he shot the guys in the subway, I kind of yeah, laughed. That was I, actually it was, my favorite scene in the movie. It, it that was, was intense. It yeah. was it was. And it was like I have a, a bad habit, which I inherited from my mother of nervous laughter. Okay. And it's it's kind of like I laugh. I do. It's it's not like, and I'm not saying this because I'm talking, I'm, I'm relating myself to the, the character, but I do. I have a habit of laughing at inappropriate times because it's just how I've always dealt with things because I do have a dark sense of humor. Um, but I just like, I was like, these guys are, and first of all, if he wasn't there, they probably would have raped that poor woman on the subway because yeah. they were your typical early 1980s Wall Street assholes that were like, they're doing cocaine and they're, you know, they're making money. They're young. They're making money. And it's like this woman's just some broad on the subway. They look like they were fresh out of Jor uh, Jordan Belcourt's uh, uh, oh, yeah. office. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. That's that's what I pictured in my head. I'm like, they, they, just, they, they, they were on loan from another Martin Scorsese movie. And yep. then they were taking the subway on the way home. And they got caught in the crossfire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was it was very, very poetic at uh at that you know that he just they're beating the shit out of him all of a sudden the lights go out and just bang 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 you know i'm like oof you know and i did i just, I just and, kind of like, and you know what it wasn't that 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 scene was was so much violent because mm -mm. we've seen way way oh, more God, violent yeah. shit oh, we're, God, we're, yeah. we're gonna be watching hellraiser on your channel there you don't get much more gorier than that <laughs> no, shit, brother no you know no especially the ending of that movie right the, 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 the whole damn movie you know yeah yeah <laughs> there's, there's way worse stuff it, it was the intensity of it i think yes. it, it, it 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 bothered people because it was so visceral and realistic oh maybe may, i'm guessing that's probably it didn't bother me in that way no. i i it, no. it felt to me like i was watching reality you know that, I, it, I mean that was you know, it that's it. And it, you know, it's not like you cheer these things in reality, but at the same time, it's like, I've, I've been, I've, I've hit those lows in my life. I've never once. So considered... we both live near big cities and we've seen some shit, you know, yeah. and, and shit yep. goes down and it, 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 it goes down to the point to where you have to wonder, am I really seeing what I'm seeing? Yeah, mm -hmm. I probably am. And I should probably walk briskly and not look back, yep. you know? And, and you know, I, it's funny. I say, I live in a small town. The first night I moved back here, there was a homicide. And it's like, so it, it happens everywhere. And it's, it's a part of, unfortunately, it's a part of life. And for this, it's, it's like, it was, it's just, it's a gritty character study in mental illness and its effect on people and the way they relate to the, the outside world. And th like I said, that scene was just like, you could see that, just that break in him where he just, the, the moment he was just like, ah, that's it. You know, when the other guy gave him the gun, he, he knew he wasn't supposed to have it. He knew he wasn't supposed to have that. Not only because, you know, he wasn't supposed to carry a gun, but I think he had at least a, a small amount of cognition to where he realized that I'm on seven different medications. I probably should not have a firearm. But he took it because of what happened. And that I just, do like the fact that they're very upfront in this movie about he has mental illness. Oh, yeah. Right? He, he's not stable. He wants to be stable. Most he does. people that, and that, that's true. I mean, most people, and that, that's something that, that, that a aggravates the shit out of me sometimes. It, 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 you know, I, I have my own issues, not near to as much as Joker. I, I have like, you know, seasonal depression and yep. hypertension. Okay. The, those yeah. are things that I can control. I have good days and bad days. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to go out and shoot somebody. I'm no. actually qualified to carry a firearm you know so I'm, not, I'm definitely not that serious but you know i do understand the fact that when you're having a bad day it's not because you want to you yeah. know you can't just throw money at a problem and, and fix mental health people that have mental health it's something that they have to fight it's it's like having an addiction and fighting that it, it, it yeah 
it, it is a battle, you know, and, and, and people that is like, like, you know, when Robin Williams passed away and people were like, oh, well, he was rich. Why would, why would he do that? You know, he was a coward or something like that. I'm like, oh. you have to understand that you're always two or three bad days away from a bad decision. Yep. And that's exactly what Joaquin Phoenix is in this movie. He's, he's not, he's not the genius calculating Jack Nicholson type Joker. No, no he's not Jack Napier. This is the guy that's just two or three days away from, from becoming a super villain Joker. Mm-hmm. So two or three bad days away. Oh, wait, here's Salvador coincidence. I think not. He is the Zodiac confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Maybe, oh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> but but no. yeah, that 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 uh, that scene that that scene mm. on the subway was definitely yeah. my favorite. That that was that was something that the tension built up, and just when when the one bad guy, the main bad guy, started singing "Send in the Clowns," I was like, yep. "Oh my god!" Yep. It, gave, it gave me goosebumps. I was getting chills like like from the first time I saw Clockwork Orange. That's what it reminded me of. I have not seen that movie in so long. I actually have Lego figures of a clockwork. Orange. You could tell that there was a lot of influences on this movie. Uh-huh. Clockwork orange was, was a little bit of an influence, probably more so taxi driver, but mm. in a clockwork orange, the main character, uh, uh, Alex is his name. And he Malcolm McDowell, right? Malcolm McDowell. Yeah. And he's, he's, he's mental. He's has mental issues too. He also comes <laughs> from a slightly wealthy background and mm. he and his friends are in a gang that just go out and, beat the shit out of people for kicks yeah. and their shtick is they like to uh, do musicals while they're beating the shit mm-hmm. out of people and they're doing singing in the rain while they're doing a home invasion and raping a woman. Yep. So it, it's, and that was again, seventies way, way, way more rough than this movie folks. Yeah. Way more rough. You know, you know it's, that's the funny thing about Clockwork Orange. You can relate it to this, and it's like that movie was that when Sal just said that movie was ultra violent. It absolutely was. And my my mother in law is like a double uh, master's degree in uh, psychology, and that's like one of her favorite movies. I mean, she's got like a a, a, four, a five foot um, Clockwork Orange poster in her living room. That's funny. I used to have a poster as well. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I, just, I liked the art of it, and I liked the message. You know, the the whole message was yep. you know. You can control these things with with substances, mm. but will society still accept you back? That was what it was all about, and there's some of that element in this as oh, well. Yeah. So, and that was the thing with him, uh, and you could really see the reality of it when they uh, they cut the funding to his uh, his psychologist, and he's like, "Where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do?" And she's just like, I, "You know, I, I don't know." You know, and and that that was the thing you could see that, like I said, that that subway that was like his trigger moment. That, mm-hmm. that was that was the trigger point. Well, actually, his his therapy getting cut that was the trigger. Losing the, his job, yeah, losing his job. There's it's the snowball started rolling downhill, and you just knew that this was just going to devolve into what we saw unfold. And his obviously like the relationship with his mom, uh, with her, uh, you know, the the background with Thomas Wayne, and oh my God, I'm going to jump ahead here, but the. Uh, the adoption reveal. Mm. Oh, Did not good. see that one coming. That was refreshingly no. original. And and I, I applaud oh, the movie for wow, doing that, was... that because I was starting to get a little tensed up. I'm like, mm. if they're going to reveal Joaquin Phoenix as Batman's brother, God damn you movie. You know, you're going to make know. me angry with that. Cause it, that just, that's not going to work for me. Nope. You know? I was like, and, that's lazy. It, it, it did. Lazy. It started to feel kind of lazy. I'm like, God, man, writing really. You know? And then, when when they when they did I didn't I, I I applaud the film for making me not see it coming because mm-hmm. there, there's a lot, have you seen Taxi Driver at all Pete you ever seen that movie I have but it was years ago okay um, it's something I want to rewatch or probably buy on right Blu-ray, this is honestly. very very close to Taxi Driver if anything else you you'll, like if you watch Taxi Driver now mm-hmm. you'll probably see all the same beats but okay but yeah the 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 twists in this movie surprised me a little bit more than Taxi Driver I would say. You know, but mm. but there's a, a lot of similarities, and I think that was on purpose. But I'm okay with that because most good comic book movies do copy some of those beats. You know what I mean? They, yeah. Because they're, they're it's an homage to pop culture in mm-hmm. general because that's where comics fit into the whole grand scheme of things. Yeah, I I uh, I loved, and I'm not a outside of his acting. I'm not a Robert De Niro fan at all. But like his acting. I got. I I will always admire that man. He, he is, can be really good sometimes. He, he I, I haven't been able to pinpoint which movie is my favorite Robert De Niro film because it's like Al Pacino. I could say, oh, pff, son of a woman, duh, you know. But I yeah. mean, 
with, with Robert De Niro, he's been in so many great movies, but for me to just think of which performance like he really stood out in, probably I would say uh, Men of Honor, that he played a Master Chief in that. And since I was in the Navy and I knew, knew a lot of Master Chiefs, I could tell he'd been hanging around the Master Chiefs bar. Is that the one with Cuba Gooding Jr.? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that one. All right. I saw he when was, he acted out. like he'd been an old salty dog because that's mm. exactly how they talk and act. Everything is a brag and everything is, you know, your your ego is just, you know, so. Mm. But, yeah, I, I'd probably say that one, but that, that was not that well-received of a movie, so I don't know if I can say that was his, you know, mm. his Oscar-winning performance at all. But, but, you know, Robert De Niro was in Taxi Driver, but that movie's more about the movie and not so much the performance, although he was freaking magnificent in it, in it. But there, there's, there's a lot of similarities. And also I want to mention the part in the movie that made me literally laugh out loud in the theater. Oh, I forgot to punch out. Boom. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he punches the fucking time clock until it falls off the wall. And I'm thinking all the jobs that I quit, if I could have done that, mm -hmm. Oh man, it would have hurt like hell, but I would have done it. You know? Yeah, there, uh, there. That was. I think that's something we've all wanted to do at one point. Right. When, when you had that that job, so where you have to punch that damn time clock. It's like, oh, uh, just one day I'm gonna know, just rip. It, the thing that off was the probably wall. the funniest thing he did in the movie. At least I thought so. It's like he was he was unintentionally being. That's when he was starting to become Joker. Mm -hmm. and he's like, oh, I forgot to punch out, and then he just walks over and just punches the damn time clock, and it's just you can see this thing just crippling and falling right off the wall. And I'm like. <laughs> Oh, kids nowadays probably don't even know what a time clock is. No. <laughs> they, they had one. I quit the radio station in uh, February of 2018. And we still had the old school like ink time clock. And uh, I uh, I went in there one night and I it was like around Christmas time. And I was like, I'm going to do something this time clock. So I brought a big, I have like an Optimus Prime that's like this big. So I took him in there and I put both his hands up on the time clock and bent him back like he was a. Uh, doing dirty stuff to the time clock. And I took, a, I took a bunch of pictures of it and I put it on my DJ page, which is, oh which has since been God. a all my, all my old, like my wrestling and my DJ pages. Are is erased. that why you got banned from the radio? No, no. It's something I said on air, <laughs> but yeah, I, I did that. And then they had this, like this elf. What was it? Uh, they had the, el the big elf on a shelf of the radio station. Oh, and uh, I had Optimus, I had Optimus hog tie him. <laughs> and uh and he was holding him at sword point in the uh on the owner of the radio station's desk which there was nobody there when i was in there so i just but, walked but did you freely. do tr a trooper on a pooper did you ever do that one take a no i didn't i should have <laughs> i might this year because my kids got all those huge like 18 inch uh storm oh, troopers so yeah I took that on a porta potty <laughs> Trooper on a pooper for Christmas this year. Think it over. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so this, uh, the time clock scene was great. And um, when uh, I'm trying to think of what, um, oh God, the the whole, when, when he, you know, had that fantasy about going on uh, Murray Franklin's show about, you know. That him. I knew was a fantasy because I'm yep. thinking there's no way in hell you can afford a ticket to go see a live no. performance. And there's no, no way in hell they'd let you in there. So, yeah, I did. That was the easy one. But then slowly as this movie's evolving, mm -hmm. certain scenes play out where you're starting to wonder now, is he is he imagining this or is this actually happening? And they started getting more and more clever. Mm -hmm. as that went on because there's only so many times you can do that in a movie to where people like eh, yeah he's they're gonna take the bait right? mm -hmm. the uh the relationship he had with uh, zazzy the, beats zazzy beats is i yeah. couldn't think of her name that was a beautiful now, woman by the way oh yeah absolutely um and she did she did really well in the role yeah. i was i was happy with she her did the best with what she had i yep. kind of wish she would have had a little bit more character to it that would have been more interesting i think she was but... kind of one-dimensional yeah um but that she, that was, she was there to serve the story and that's yep. kind of unfortunate yeah she was just a plot point mm -hmm. um yeah and and she had th that was no through no fault of the actress obviously no, um, no. and i'm not knocking the movie for that i mean but it was just something that for I all think... we know there could be a director's cut of this somewhere where she yep. has more lines you yeah, know but absolutely yeah, I, I kind of wish she would have had a little bit more lines because I, I was starting to like her and then mm -hmm. i realized that 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 she was more of a, of a plot point she was an object of his desires and uh, a motivational tool to get to the next scene so that's kind of unfortunate but you know minor thing you know south said he's gonna wipe zazzy beats up <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna wipe her up no she was she was cool and that was the thing like i'm looking at that going now 
know what I know about psychology because I took a lot of psych in college. I'm like, people like Arthur Fleck do not have functional, uh, rela healthy relationships. And, and that's kind of the no. picture they were painting through his fantasies. And I, I see, you know, that was obviously a, a microcosm of his mental illness. And it was done really well. I, I really, like I said, you, you, like you said, you're kind of buying into it. Then you're like, wait a second. You're thinking like, this guy is like a complete social outcast. There's no way he's going to have this relationship with this beautiful woman when he's this like low funk. He's very, he was pretty low functioning when you, when you really think about his, his um, interactions with people. I mean, that's the big difference between this and taxi driver too. I don't want to say too much cause I don't want to spoil taxi driver for you, but there, there uh -huh. are instances in taxi driver where you, you see Robert De Niro's character as he, is function he's high functioning he's not enough to like be institutionalized by any mm -hmm. sense of the means but he uh, also lacks the ability to maintain any kind of healthy relationship yes. whatsoever yep and that's kind of that's kind of what i was alluding to you just pretty much uh did it for me so thank you um no man that uh that that was the thing with him and you know, like you said you look at uh his character when he relates to his coworkers, you know, they all think he's weird or, you know, they're kind of creeped out by him. And that's, I, Oh God, I, that laugh of his though, man. Oh, oh my God. The first time I ever heard that, I'm like, Whoa. Yeah. Like that was Whoa! a great, that was you know? a great Joker like, laugh. Like, like in the, right. Yeah. Cause they're like all the good Joker performances that we've seen, like Heath Ledger, you don't really feel Joker mm -mm. completely until he's looking at the camera and doing that shit, you know, and it's like, mm. I'm a man of my word. <laughs> you know, and he just kind of goes off the rails. I'm not even going to try to imitate that. Yeah. But that laugh, like, made the hair on the back of your neck stand up. And that, that's what you would want from something like that. Like, you, you mm. just give you a cold chill, like, you know, massive creeper factor, you know? Voice-wise, like, Phoenix is on point with Mark Hamill in Mark Hamill's iteration of the Joker and the animated yeah. movies and stuff. But no, he like his, his physical performance, uh, like I said, his, him seeing, and I like how they went back later on and they showed all the parts with him and Zazzy beats. And then they removed her and you see the reality of what's going on. It's like, Oh, okay. Now, do you think oh. that was too on the nose or do you think that was necessary? Cause some of the reviews that I've heard, they, they say that maybe that was a little too much like, okay, we, you know, we, we they, basically nailed the part that she's not there when mm -hmm. he wanders into her apartment she goes hey yeah. you're the guy from down the down two different down two hall, doors yep. down right and you're like whoa yeah you know like holy yeah. shit whoa you know it's like so you know i i picked up on it there yeah but do you think maybe that they they went and removed those scenes like for a more dumbed down audience do you do you feel like maybe that was a little too a little too on the nose I mean, to me, I didn't really mind it because I, I'm kind of a fan of those things. Like I said, for the you know, for the people in the cheap seats, you know, metaphorically speaking, that might not have picked that up. You know, <laughs> and I don't mind because I, you know, I think that it's you know, for me, I didn't need it, but it's not something that I, I'm going to pick apart because I kind of, I kind of liked it. Um, just from just from a, it's just a setup. It's a plot point. It's a setup thing, and it's just kind of you know, it's putting it's putting it into full uh, the full spectrum of just how removed from reality he truly is. And the part with uh, Thomas Wayne in the bathroom, yeah, was, was kind of like like I said, those were like he those didn't were want tense moments. You know, he did just, not just want to accept tension. That. Yeah, he's like you know, and Wayne was like, yeah, hey, you're adopted. You know, your mom's mentally ill. No, no. Well, yeah, dude, like. You know, you're adopted. So it's like, because it, you're thinking the whole time, did he get this from his mom? Like, that's that was in the back of my mind. Like, is his mom this? Man? Well, it turns out she was mentally ill, but it's not his real mother. And this kid has been through, like, traumatic, like, beatings, you know, chained to a radiator, you know, uh, assaulted by his mom's boyfriend. I mean. Probably blocked it all out at some point. Yeah. Yep. And that's because it, it's, it's never mentioned in, until the, the big reveal with the yep. with the hospital record. I got a thousand dollar super chat from Salvador. Uh, the forced laugh is awesome. I especially like the part when he was at the comedy club and laughing at the wrong parts because he didn't understand humor. Yes. That was some very clever filmmaking, right? There. It was that that was that was Phillips and uh, uh, Joaquin Phoenix making art right there because mm -hmm. that, 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 that shows you everything. It's like he wants to be funny, but he doesn't understand how it works. He's always, yeah. he's always like two steps behind or two steps ahead. He doesn't know where the laughs are supposed to come. So he's basing, he's trying to, he's trying to solve the, 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 the formula of comedy 
by the reaction of the rest of the audience. He's got his little his little notes there, and he, he like yeah. he can't he can't spell properly, so he's writing down like, well, this guy makes a sex joke, and then some other people laugh, you know. So yeah. so make awkward jokes. I keep fucking with my beard. I can't help it. <laughs> I can't. It's like it's like my own little worries. Don't I just keep stroking my beard, I'm trying to like straighten you, it out. You, you got another head growing in there. You just don't know it yet. It's it's a conjoined. It's a conjoined beard twin. It's, it's like Hulk, that's it's where like he hides Hulk, his Hulk brother. Grip. His superpowers are under the beard. That's who makes all my decisions. My beard. Um, I got to no. trim mine, man. I got too much too much gray going on right here, and, and I'm growing this for my my Guy Fieri costume. So I, I got to let this kind of grow out a little bit, and then. Right after Halloween, this is this shit's getting trimmed down to almost nothing. So oh, I, I I'm letting the the sides all like it, I'm just gonna grizz it out over the winter. I'll I'll trim this up, but this I just let. Uh, My let sister go. was visiting. She's like, "Oh, I can see your distinguishing features." I'm like, "What the hell does that mean?" She's like, "Oh, the, the gray sideburns." I'm just like, "Fuck, gotta go get my hair cut now." You know, eventually I'll probably be about as bald as you if it comes to that. You know, yeah, I, I, I'm not sitting under no headlamp again, dying my shit. <laughs> yeah, no. I dye I dye my beard, but uh, I haven't uh, I haven't done that in about a year. And I just I started shaving my head as soon as I, I started losing my hair in like two thousand one. I shaved. Yeah, my no, head, I'm, so. I'm not I'm not I'm not doing those implants, man. I'll I'll just I'll, mm-hmm. I'll go all Patrick Stewart on that shit. I'll yep, make yep. it work. <laughs> yep. So and then I grew my hair back last year, and people were like. Like people like uh, in the in the groups now that I've met, you know, they, they I, they'll see an old picture of me on Facebook with hair, and it's like uh, Alex was like, "Holy, sh- is that you?" I'm like, "Yeah, that was me." Because I did a wedding in October, and my hair was all slicked back, and I had a big old beard, and I was dressed in a suit and tie. And he's like, "That's you." I'm like, "Yep, that's me," because <laughs> I am a I'm a pastor too. So should grow that long, play Jesus for Halloween, but but do the do the Family Guy version of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I had a. I, I I had when my last summer when it was like not this past summer but the last year it was like my hair was down past almost my ears on the side in the back you know not up here so much I mean that was long but it was like sparse so I walked into my old job and I was like are you auditioning for Jesus Christ Superstar like what the hell are you that, doing that's the part where you just kind of look at him and go yep <laughs> hey but no man so buddy Christ in the house. <laughs> Let's see. P is going to cosplay as Kratos, so he's growing it out. That that was a that was one Sal Sal tossed at me, and I'm like, I could so do a Kratos cosplay. I could I could rock that. I, I'm thinking about doing that one next. Yeah, um, do 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 Kratos, and then and then put Trey as a uh, uh, boy, and just hmm. just walk him around on on Halloween, just call him boy. <laughs> <laughs> either either that, or I'll do a, I'll do an Angus Shram and be the tall man. I don't. I don't want to ruin that for you because I forgot you're about two consoles behind. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the God of War game came out last year and it was freaking amazing. If you had a PS4 and uh, yeah, Kratos. Kratos is an older man and has a son now. So and he just calls him boy. Wasn't there a God of War game on PlayStation Two? Because I feel like I played that. Oh before. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, I, it started I, on PlayStation Two and it yeah. carried on to the the PS4 version. They just they just called it God of War because that's how we do names now. We just we just call it something, you know. <laughs> It's Halloween. Halloween. Got a war. What the fuck ever. Just buy it. Shut up. <laughs> oh, his name. Oh, oh Atreus. That's Atreus. his name. Atreus. Okay. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember. I just know that he says boy so much in the in the game that it's become a meme because it's like boy, dad of boy, god of war. <laughs> yeah, that'll that'll be that'll have to be something for like we do uh, we do next Son year. Son of dad. <laughs> little man is uh he's he's Groot this year that's he wanted to be Groot he was Groot he won first place in that uh at the comic con we went to so with his little Groot costume so it was adorable I, he is he thank god he doesn't look like me um but no so this yeah that that scene in the apartment with uh with Phoenix where he's sitting there and I was I honestly was not um was not sure if he was going to hurt her because she you know obviously rejected him not not like completely but she was very she was very smart that's one thing that they wrote her very smart to where she was treating him with kid gloves and being very kind there's and, been a debate did he did he kill her or hurt her uh, what do you think for for a real reveal what i think i i don't think he did i don't either i, I cuz i think it was revealed very early on that even though this guy is unstable. He still has principles. He does. He he wasn't just going this, out. This and movie like, went way out of its way to tell you this guy has principles. Because if he was just a complete 
sociopath or psychopath. Mm. He would just go into a McDonald's and then just, just waste everybody. Yeah. But this is not that kind of guy. This guy's going to go and get rid of people that he can do without. Yep. You know, he, let he let the little guy go. Right. He let the little guy go. So I'm pretty sure he let Zazzy Beats go too. Yeah. Zazzy Beats probably scared enough not to call the cops. Yep, and and I think that and, and uh, at any point anybody could have called the cops on this guy. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, like a lot of people, it's like, do I call the cops on this guy or do I just pretend like it didn't happen? I I feel like they just let it they let it go uh, mm -hmm. because they they probably figured he was just some weirdo. He was harmless. He's a weirdo because back then, like I said, without the internet, you didn't have the prevalence of knowledge about mental health and the awareness. A stray of it. man wandered into my apartment. <laughs> Stray men wandered into my flat today. <laughs> you know, Sal says, I don't think he killed her. Yeah, she was. She was nice to him, though. That was the thing. Despite his obvious um, invisible, uh, you know, problems, she was. She was kind to him. and Right. And she didn't She didn't chase him out with a broom or anything no. like that or scream or call the police. She probably said, "You." Get, I, in fact, if I remember correctly, I, was, I don't know, it was a couple of days ago, but, you know, you have to go home now, you know. And yeah, she she asked him, she said, do you want me to is there somebody I can call? Can I call your mother? It, yeah. So he and, yeah, he probably didn't. But they yep. they never they never showed, you know, no. we'll, we'll we'll get to that. I, I yep. don't want to jump jump ahead too far here. I don't I don't think he hurt her. And that was and that was another thing is I think he was kind because she had a daughter. I think that was it. He he didn't you know with his relationship right, with his mother. That's right because they 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 referenced that on the when he was on the the Murray show. You yep. know, like the guy it said it's like I wish I had a son like you. You know, uh -huh. that was a heartbreak right there, man. Oh, you know, I I can't even imagine. You know, I mean, I I yeah. I, I wow. You know, <laughs> I don't even know where I'd start with something like that. You know, it yeah. it, it it says a lot. You know, it, it, you you can tell that this guy's had a big hole in the middle of him for a long time. And this 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 character that we see is what grew around the hole, you know. So, mm -hmm. and that's that's you know that just goes into his relationships with uh, with all the other characters. Like I said, when the uh, when the little guy and what well, the other guy he got the gun from Randall is that his name? I can't remember that guy's name. I think his name was Randall. The, the, the other clown he got the gun from the kind of bigger, heavy set, bald guy. Um, when he offed him in the apartment with those scissors. Holy shit. That now, was another let, let's address that. Would you that that was the most violent that was scene in the whole movie? And, and even that it was still you've watched Walking Dead. I've watched <sighs> Walking Dead. There's been scenes on the Walking Dead that just kind of make me go, Ugh. There there's been I mean, <laughs> if you've ever seen Hostel or Saw, yeah. That and those were nothing. popular for a long time. Oh, too. God, I don't yeah. remember people screaming and whining about those guys. In fact, people yep. were, were eating that shit up. Oh, yeah. Saw itself has about 18 fucking sequels to it. I used to go watch the Saw movies because they'd release them every uh, Halloween. I loved the first one. I didn't go back for any of the sequels, though, because I, I felt like that was one of those movies like what we're talking about right now where it should have just stayed a standalone yep. and not been a franchise. I, I watched one through five every opening night every year. Um and after that, I quit because after that they went to like the jigsaw after part six. Right. I think it was. And I, I mean just, that, I, like, that first gone. one, it was it was a nice little independent yep. horror art film that that worked. You know, it, it worked for me. Yeah. It was violent as hell, but it, it all made sense. You know, mm -hmm. and and had some decent performances in it. And I, I didn't bother going back for any of the any of the sequels. But but yeah, that's so much more more violent shit. I mean, you know, the, the scissor thing to the neck. It, it's like that. That is the most violent scene in the entire movie. Jammed in the entire it in his movie. eye and smashed his head off the wall. And that Did was you another... see that other movie that they were talk, uh, uh, that came out recently? That had uh, there, there was a movie that came out that had um, John Travolta in it, where he's playing like a stalker fan. It was directed by the guy from Limp Biscuit. It was it Fred Durst. Fred or yeah, Fred Durst directed this movie. It was called uh -huh. Oh God, the or fa fan fanatic. It's called the Fanatic. I have never seen it. It's it's getting just ridiculed on the internet because uh, um, Travolta. Because Travolta. That's really all I can say. He, he's playing a guy that's autistic, and he stalks this guy, this actor that's like a complete asshole to him. And uh, I guess it's got, so, yeah, the fanatic. That's it. It's just called fanatic. Um, came out just a couple months before Joker. It's it's a very similar case where, where a guy is obsessed with a, a, a famous person and stalks him. And actually goes into his house. The guy's name is Moose. All right, he goes into his house. I have to see this movie. Is from what I understand, it's just batshit bonkers crazy because it's 
it's Travolta playing what he thinks an autistic person would be. Oh God. And going a little too far with it. You know what I mean? Uh, like what's what's that what's that what's that term on uh, a Tropic Thunder never go full retard? Yeah, never go full retard. That was it sounds that was to it. me like he, he he didn't take the advice and just after went, went for it. Yeah. After Battlefield Earth, you think he would have learned <laughs> Jesus oh, Christmas was that bad. Earth. There's oh, that, that one needs to be a watch party. Wow. Oh, oh my God. That movie's oh. painful. They look like generic Klingons in that. So. Oh, so bad. Yeah. Dude, that that one also has our favorite Forrest Whitaker in it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started on that on that road right Wait, now. Wait, wrong eye. <laughs> right. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Remember that just the Cal the, the San Andreas fault line right down the middle of his face. The one eye seceding from the rest of his face. <laughs> Oh no. my God! I, yeah, Salvador says that movie's making my eyes rain. Man, just the Dutch angles alone, and, and the, the just it, it, oh yeah, Travolta. That that's a guy that it's like you get to where you start to like him again, mm. and then he puts out about eighteen movies that just suck, and then you're like, God, just go away for a while and don't come back. We'll then he'll be have... gone for a little while, and then he'll come back with something that's kind of good, have a renaissance again, and then he just kind of. Pu pushes his, his way around yeah it's like it's like travolta in small doses but the guy's absolutely fucking nuts he he's is. like hey i was an urban cowboy he really is nuts <laughs> <laughs> he's, there's a guy that needs to be on some pills all right so yeah well isn't he one of those scientologists though yeah oh but, yeah yeah all of that like like wears a different shirt every day never there we wears go the same clothes twice yeah he's he's got he, he should just make a movie about him call that joker too <laughs> Joker revisited. Joker squared. <laughs> Joker redo. Joker, Joker redo squared. with John Travolta, just his real life. There's nothing. There's no. There's no dramatization or anything. It's just John Travolta. Oh my god. No man. That and the, we were talking about uh, the apartment scene there where he he stabs uh, Randall. Like, just stabs him. Like he shoves that in his eyes. And, and you know what? That wall. scene. He's got. He's got half the makeup on. He just mm. has the white on his face. Yep. And it, it's almost like. Todd Phillips, I think, did that on purpose just so he could get that spatter that over the blood top spatter. of him. Yeah. And I just remember seeing that in the trailer. I'm like, he's kind of, kind of got that little. And I'm thinking, Jesus, he looks like Brandon Lee in The Crow. You know what I mean? Like he's got mm. the long hair, just the white. Then the splatter comes across it. It's like, it's like he's now he's a ghost. You know what I mean? He, he's he's yeah. the he's the spirit of you done fucked up. You know, and he jams that scissor in the side of his neck blood spray all over the place yep. but again that's a scene that we we haven't not seen before on like yeah. a, a csi or a walking dead on prime time yeah or, they do know. that on network tv man i've seen that on criminal minds like uh, the, you know just no that you can't i mean you, you didn't see you didn't see rambo but i mean yeah. that movie i mean we're, we're talking about full-on molar ram breaking into somebody's chest and pulling their you know it just holy shit you know so yeah I mean, that, that that one is a little different you know i mean this one here i was expecting it to be worse than rambo not even fuck yeah like you said man and then this just to show on like a little a little bit of a play on his humanity like you said he let the little guy go yeah he let him now, really now, help. did he you helped think him? he was gonna kill that guy i did, did. i really I did, did. I, was, I was like really worried i'm like i'm just like i'm like I was like, I know, I feel bad for the little dude. It's not like he can fight back. <laughs> he's like I mean, half crying. He's just like freaked the fuck out. He's like, oh God, why, why? Yep. And the longer that went on, the more uncomfortable it got. Mm. And I appreciate the fuck out of that movie for doing that to me. Yeah, I feel that way. Yep, dude. Isn't that that's, weird. That, you know, it's that it's is... like you want a movie to make you feel yep. like it's not formulaic, like you're really yeah. in the middle of some shit. Like something could actually go like terribly wrong. Yeah. Here. Like this isn't like it's it's like like you said like formulaic paint by numbers MCU where it's like, oh well the, well the protagonist is going to face a little bit of adversity, but ultimately you know that no not here this this guy is you know this this little dude is trapped in this apartment with a guy who just took a pair of scissors and stabbed his boy to death you know, smash his head off a wall. He's got blood over his face and he's sitting there just chilling. And, and again, that was somebody that, that did him dirty, ratted him out for the yep. whole gun. Now there, there's a scene we haven't talked about yet oh, where he's oh. in the children's hospital doing his clown thing. And the gun falls. And then out. the gun falls out on the floor. Now that's another one of those ones where I kind of uncomfortably chuckled. I, I laughed. I did. That, that, I laughed. that was a f not intentionally supposed to be a funny moment, but the way that they directed it, yep. Todd Phillips being com a, a comedic director. Uh huh. Fuck, that was funny. I laughed. It, it, it was. wasn't supposed to be funny, but it's like you're in a children's hospital 
and a gun falls out on the floor. And then he's trying to play it off like he's like, I'm doing this shit. It's a prop gun, honestly. (laughs) A prop gun. It's a prop gun. The, the same prop gun that he's, he's in an apartment and he's, he's like watching TV and he's you know, oh. kind of doing the little dancey dance oh, and all of a sudden, God. pop! And then he gets all scared and runs around like almost like a dog that just heard a firecracker. You know? I'm watching an old more war movie, Mom. <laughs> he turns the, the, turns the TV up TV really up. loud. Oh my God. I'm like, damn, that was kind of smart. You know? If, if, yeah. If, oh, Jesus Christ. Man. Yep, yeah, and and Oh man, did did that just, yeah? <laughs> but yeah, because I w- I was wondering if he was gonna uh, back to that scene again with with the scissors in the neck. I was wondering if he was gonna let that guy out because it's like, yeah, the, you know, the thing is up high, and this guy is like you know soaking wet up to the about the top of my knees, you know, mm-hmm. and he's st- he's just standing there and he turns around. And I'm thinking, oh fuck. Yep. I, that, oh, that was, fuck. I was like, and he, he turns around. He can barely look at him. He's like, um. I can't, you know, he's, he's like, he's, he kind of reaches up for a second. Like he just realizes it's a lost fucking cause. And now I'm feeling bad for that guy too. Yep. And Holy I, shit. You know, I thought when, when Phoenix says he kind of faked him out with the door and he's like, ah, you know, I was like, oh God, he's, he's really going to, he's going to, oh, they, they made us feel safe for a second. He's going to kill him now. And oh, then he let him go. Man. And I was and like, then oh. even then I was Ooh. thinking, is he going to grab him on the way out? No, yeah. He goes, grab him, pull he him goes, back in. Now, do you suppose that he's the guy that told the police? Because because it, it, at this point, either Zazzy Beats or the the little guy could have could have told the police. I would I would venture a guess to say because the police probably... we, we didn't address this. The police have been on this guy's ass ever since the oh, subway yeah. shooting, and the... Th- those those two guys. I was I was almost waiting. They didn't do it. I'm glad they didn't do it. Like oh, this is Detective. Um, uh, commit Gordon, you know, Gordon, this is detective yep. Gordon here. I'm like, if they announce this guy as Gordon, I'm going to be pissed. Yep. You know? Yeah. It's like, cause now you're doing Gotham all over again. Yeah. Just, just leave them unnamed. Right. Just leave them unnamed. They, they did. They just had some generic names. Yep. I'm like, Oh, thank God. That they, yeah. you know, cause it's like you, you get this movie really went out of its way to stay away from that Marvel formula, man. And, and, and I'm it, glad. I, I can't thank him enough for it. I know. I cause it's like, it would have been so easy for DC to just an- announce it was, it was uh Shea Wiggum. I think is his name. I, he was in a bunch of movies. He was on boardwalk empire and mm-hmm. he was in Kong skull Island. They could have introduced Shea Wiggum is, is Gordon. I'm glad That's his name. I was going to yeah. say, yeah, the guy was in Kong skull Island. He played mm-hmm. kind of a badass in that. Yeah. Um, he's, he's always good in everything. He's a character actor and he, he yeah. usually plays the same character. He's either the cop or the soldier, you know, yeah, he's, he just fits that role. He, he looked, does. He, he, he always like acts that. like he's been a cop or soldier for his entire life. He just has that, that, you know, way about him. So perfect character actor, but yeah, he's not Gordon. Thank God. But yeah. it would have been so easy for them to of, uh, uh, and it would have it would have just been like, oh, of course he is. That's exactly would have been the reaction had they done that at this point. I'm like, here we are setting up the universe. Got to set up these universes. Sal's comment here, and this is one thing that I didn't mention that I, I mentioned to my wife. Uh, my biggest complaint: he had a snub nose revolver that holds six shots, and he fired eight in the subway. Yep, I was like. No, that's a 38. I'm like, that's a that's a 38 special. I'm like, that's that's a six shot revolver. That does not hold eight rounds. And I kind of mentioned that to my wife. I was like, he fired too many bullets. I'm like, they kind of missed the bus on that one. I'm, you know, I'm pissed that I didn't catch that. No. Yep. That was only that was that was a. I'm glad you mentioned that because I forgot about it as we're talking here. Because I know some revolvers do carry like ten shots, but yeah, not that one, one, not a 38. Yeah. Nope. Especially those. not 1982. No. no. Fictional Gotham with the garbage strike going on and people being poor. Yeah. No, no, that that was yeah, that was a six shot revolver. And he popped off eight rounds, and uh, but no man, that um, yeah, that, like it's just Shea Wiggum, the actor's name. Yeah, he was he was great in that. Oh my god, did those two catch a hellacious beat down in that subway when they shot that guy? Uh, as they were chasing him, and yeah, I think it was Gary that called the police on him. I don't think his as he beats would have done it because that would have been too obvious if the police showed up at his house because. She was, you know, he saw her there, and I think he would have much more reason to suspect Gary at that point, uh, because what Gary just watched him do. So, also, Sazzy Beats was the one that said she just said, you know, that this 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 building is something else. I I, I don't I think she would have deliberately looked the other way at that point. You know, yeah, just. Yeah. just yeah, just it's like don't it's like bother a, her or daughter. You know, basically, I, I've already told you all, all the problems I've had with my neighbors. I never once called the cops on them. So. Yep. 
<laughs> I've wanted to a couple of times, but I'm like, nah, I'm not going to be that guy. I don't want to be know. that guy. It, you, know? you can't. You just don't want to be that guy. No, because then it could just cause issues down right? the road. Right, yeah. You know, so you know I think about retribution and stuff like that. Because then you're constantly thinking about, like, well, what can I do to piss that guy off? And then he's going to call the cops on me, too. Mm -hmm. and first fucking chance he gets, right? So. Yep. Yep. So, no, that, uh, that whole... That whole scene with him and you know the little guy that was that was kind of like that was very tense and then yeah i was like i'm laughing he's he's going on a talk show that night now how do you feel about the whole fact that that subway shooting triggered all these events in motion ultimately made him become the joker just just from that point on uh got the city in a in a crossfire and, and actually created a riot based around that the clown vigilante killer became a symbol of of anarchism basically at that point was that based on the the subway vigilante from the 80s in new york i, I can't don't remember know. his name because yeah i i don't i don't i wouldn't the have name. remembered all that i'd have been just a you know fucking little guy but but i just know because after like watching all these like investigative discovery specials about you know the subway vigilante from the 80s I, that was i think it was capping people at a 38 or something like that he, okay I, he, sh he shot a couple because i know there's there's or, a lot of things that were kind of implied you know because like, mm -hmm. because i do remember the garbage strike being a thing yep. and i've remembered other movies that have, have dealt with that as well and also leads to the set is just all this fucking garbage laying all around everywhere it just just makes gotham yep. you know the, the gotham in the in this show is amazing because it's yeah. like you just see just enough of it and you just see how fucked up it really is it's yes. like i i always thought that the gotham in, in the dark knight trilogy was really cool because it's chicago i'm like i've been mm. there a million times i live i live 30 minutes south of it for most of my life you know so it's mm. like yep that's chicago you know and it's like and they use it for the architecture they wanted like a big bustling busy gotham but this mm. is like gritty fucked up anarchist gotham where, where everybody's yeah. just at the end of their rope but i remember that one scene where he's kind of laying there on his bed i think it was like after after all this shit happened and there's like a, a newspaper and it's got the the clown face on it and it says yes. kill kill the rich yep and that there's a big message that whole kill the rich message is in which makes it ironic that this movie got as much protest as it is because it's like Aren't we always trying to take down the establishment, kill the yeah, rich? The whole one percent thing. Right? You know? Yeah, that's yeah, that's why Did I was. Did you even like, know that that was in this movie? No. Yeah. Well, there and like you said, the, the as far as political messaging goes, the only one I saw was the the allusion to uh it said uh Wayne equals fascist or something like that. That was it. But it was he really was, quick. Yeah, he was he, he was the establishment and, and mm. they were they were anti Wayne because he called yep. all those people clowns, clowns, which I thought was clever. All these people start showing up dressed as clowns, clowns. and I'm like holy shit you know it's yeah. like if if people banded together over something like that so fucking joker became like the opposite symbol of what batman was in the dark knight trilogy mm -hmm. you know what i mean it, it's oh it's, yeah it, it it was weird man i was not expecting that but it was it was refreshingly original i, I just figured that based on the train i was glad that the trailers didn't tell me too much there's one scene that happens i don't want to get to that scene just yet that happened in the trailers and i wish they would have omitted that you know but we'll, we'll get to that in a minute but um the fact that I, I thought maybe this whole thing with the clowns was happening and then joker just kind of rose out of that no actually he started that shit <laughs> yeah. all the things that happened in the subway were a result of actions that he put into motion when he shot those guys in the, in the subway car yep and that you know that whole eat the rich thing that that was that was a a, a recurring theme through the whole movie yeah it, it really was and like i said it go it just goes to the the grittiness of gotham and you know these people are struggling they're hungry and wayne is come you know he's going to be the savior and all this and it's like oh yeah this is this is i can see where this is going you know and and it was it was great because it wasn't any real like political heavy-handed bullshit in the i movie. don't yeah i don't feel like it was too too heavy-handed I, no. I think about the no. most i think we can probably get to the end of the movie now the the most political that the movie got was like right at the end there you know it's, yeah. it's like when he's on he's on the murray show Yep. I can't remember Murray's last name. Murray Franklin. Murray Franklin. He's on Murray the Murray Franklin. Franklin show, and he's he's sitting there, and he, he's full blown Joker at this point. Yep. Th this is this is Joaquin Phoenix's best goddamn performance. Saved it right for the end of the fucking movie. He's sitting yeah. there, and you know this is a spoiler review. So you know if you're in this far, you're in already in over your head. But you know, yeah. His original plan is he's going to blow his brains out on the Murray Franklin show. Yep. All yeah, these things that he's done. It. 
he practiced it and that's where i was getting so, some taxi driver vibes you know he's, he's got the because taxi driver has a lot of famous themes where he's doing this kind of thing mm -hmm. in the posters and stuff like that so he's 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 practicing uh, while watching the show and so you, you're thinking that that's how it's going to play out. i'm like okay so this this is why it's a one-off joker movie this guy mm -hmm. is a joker but he's going to kill himself on, on tv to, to make a statement he, he wants to make his life end on a joke that was his yep. whole plan and then murray franklin oh. starts fucking with him yep like, that like was really bad like like this guy's already off the rails he's sitting next to not dr ruth okay yeah that's what i said to my wife i was like that's supposed to be dr ruth i'm like dr. that ruth was hilarious time, uh... just, the looks on her face and he just walks on he's got like this swagger oh god that he was walks brilliant. on he's got the cigarette walks on there walks up plants a big old one right on dr ruth and i'm just like yes yep <laughs> Awesome. That was the thing, like too, is like, yeah, he just walks out on on a on a national television show, and he's just smoking a square. He's just like, fuck it, whatever. But I mean, it was 1982, and you could do that, right? Or I was, I was surprised that that the the, the the SJWs didn't get all offended by all the smoking going on. In the movie. <laughs> no. like, well, you know, if you take the smoking out of this movie, you're gonna have to just cancel the whole fucking movie, guys. Because yeah. this is 1982. He's smoking and a square and smoke God. all the time. Damn right? scene, yeah. In fact, you know what's funny, man? As much as much as movies as I love to watch, I watch a lot of old movies. You yeah. notice in the old movies, man, people always be smoking and drinking. Everybody, all everybody, day long. That was <laughs> the thing. And you come home, you put your fucking, you know, you, you put your smoking jacket on, yeah. and your sweater. They're always wearing a fucking tie all day long. Yep. First thing they do is pour themselves a fucking brandy and light light one up. You know? Yeah, it was like that. Um, I I'm a huge fan of the show Dallas. And it was like Jr. would be in his office at like ten o'clock in the morning, and he's drinking fucking whiskey. I'm like, how? How can you even function, dude? I have like one drink, and you're I'm trying like, to plan right. your whole day around that one shot. <laughs> yeah, you know, and they're they're like two, three drinks, and I'm like, you're you're trying to make whiskey. sure that the house is all padded so you can't hurt yourself on the way to the bathroom. Oh god, this guy's starting early every morning. Like, oh, I'm Jr. Yeah. Yeah, it's like like you said, man. They're always they were always in those old movies, always drinking, always smoking. Yeah, and then like you you'd have that. Yeah, the, like the dad would be out doing yard work and like slacks, a shirt and tie. And I'm like, I haven't put on. A, I don't think I've put on a fucking tie since the last wedding I did. That was actually like a formal one when I wore that suit last October. Um, but no, I mean. Yeah, or they're, else they're, if they wanted to be super sophisticated, you see them doing this shit. You know? Yep, the pipe <laughs> going to the study. No. <laughs> Look, yes, uh -huh. well, and then wearing a sweater, you know. Yep, the sweat. Up. Yeah, like the card, and not a cardigan, but like yeah, the, the button-up sweater <laughs> over the shirt and tie. You know, sitting in the study with a gla your glass and your pipe, and talking over down the nose of your glasses. You know, kind of that. <laughs> now look, Jimmy, you knew that was wrong. You know, but yeah, that, that's like that's what I <laughs> be, a, be a sport, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Now, don't make me take my belt off, young man. Oh, my God. I was watching Gamera last night with the riff tracks, and uh, uh, they're on an airplane. Mm -hmm. they, you know, most of that was filmed in Japan, you know, and then they, they cut in some American uh, scenes later. They did the same thing they did with Godzilla. If they're going to Americanize it, they got to put a bunch of subplot in there, which is usually just some people giving you exposition. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, well, this is the American version of Gamera. But they're on an airplane. This guy's talking to another guy. And they're standing up on the plane. He's got a cigarette dangling from his hand. Looks like the ash is going to fall on the other guy's shoulder. I'm like, oh, man, that's an era that I was not part of. Yeah. Smoking on a fucking airplane. You can't even take tooth. You can't even take toothpaste or mouthwash on a goddamn right? airplane. You can't they're even, smoking squares. You, you don't even let you take a fucking bottle of water on a goddamn no. airplane. This guy's got a got a fucking square hanging out of his fingers. Oh my god, a different yep. era. And that's kind of what I liked about this. They they yeah they didn't really spell out what year this was. Some people yep. I think have predicted what year it was just by the movies that were showing at the box office. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll get to that as well. But the the, the box office, but. uh I think one of the movies that was shown was the omen i think it was the omen and what the hell is the other one i can't remember i can't remember either on the marquee when, it was wednesday was lot, but they were showing actual movies it was yeah. just some made-up shit for gotham yep. like it, it was actual movies but that, that's they don't i know i paid attention to the like the uh 
you know, there's always news reports, like, like even when they open up in the beginning and he's just kind of painting his face and they're mm. playing the news, like everything's gone to hell. There's a garbage strike. I was waiting for them to actually say the year they never do. They just tell you what day it is. They don't even tell you the fucking date, you know? So they, they were really clever about those scenes. There it is. Kind Zorro, of, Zorro's gay blade. That's, that's what it, it was. That was it. Yeah. Because I saw that. I was like, Oh shit. Yeah. Like you said, these are, they're using real movies. They're not using some right. like made up shit. Okay. You know, I was like, so that's kind of cool. But yeah, I love the Warner Brothers logo at the beginning of the movie. That 80s, oh my God. I was like, oh, right, right in the nostalgia, man. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I love it. I love and it. They, and they do the nostalgia in this movie, not like it, it's like a character in the movie, like a lot of yeah. these movies do nowadays. They just can't resist that urge. Like, hey, remember the 80s? Rubik's Cube. Belinda Carlisle. Whoa. Yeah. All right. It, it didn't, it didn't smack you over the head. It no. was just, it was uh -uh. there. It was, it was just like enough. Yeah. Piece, and it, it just helped the flow of the movie along because like I said, as soon as I heard garbage, strike, I'm like, okay, so that would be New York in the early eighties. I, you know, like I said, from the best of my recollection and you know, everything I've and seen. I, re I remember that too. I'm like, I was, I was old enough to remember the, a, a garbage strike. Like that, that, that wasn't too, you know, I was like, I remember something mm -hmm. about that. It, just, it was like open things yeah. from like when i was like this big you know mm -hmm. so but yeah so he goes on the murray show and then <laughs> murray starts talking to him talking to him and it's like you get what you fucking deserve bang right yeah. in the fucking head blow brains oh, blow God. right out the fucking back and then he just kind of goes and sits or no he does he shoot him again a couple times first and then just go and sit down yeah i'm, I'm yeah, trying to remember because it just as it's all playing out it, just, it was just all one continuous shot Yep. And it was so fucking natural. And then he goes over and he grabs the camera and he talks into it. I'm like, right before they cut, there's it, the cut Joker the yep, that we there. all know right yep. there. That's when you know that's the fucking super villain right there that we've all come to know from the comic books. Yep. It, it was a hell of a build up, man. But oh, it was, it was. Done so well. Like, like the the my wife and I were talking about it when we we left the theater, and she was like. Well, she goes, you know, it was it was great. She goes, I just she goes, I kind of wish they would have got, you know. Uh, the origin story part out of the way. I was like, yeah, but I was like, you're kind of missing the point of the entire movie. Then I'm like, well, that's just it, and, I, and, and I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, how many times have we heard this in in, in reviews? Like, I'm done with another boring origin story. Just just give me Spider Man. Don't don't tell me. Don't give me the origin story. It's so boring. Bullshit. You can yeah. make a good origin story. Some and of this my, was <laughs> some of my favorite MCU movies are origin stories. Yep. The first Spider-Man was an origin story. You can make that shit fun. Yes. You can make it interesting. And that's the whole point. You, you, you want to get to know this character so that mm -hmm. when you do get to your action and pack the minute scenes of the next movie, all that stuff's been established for you. Yeah, can you imagine I, how bad the Dark Knight would have been if you would have had to add an hour on for a Batman origin story? Oh, they got that shit out of the way with the first movie. Yep, the Batman Begins. That's what that was for. Right. That's all that shit was. It, it flat out told you, like, this is how it starts. And then the next movie is my movie, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but no, yeah. this this was this was something that I, I was afraid of too. I thought that, that this was going to be too boring. I don't feel like it, you know, I know some people, some critiques have said it kind of drags a little bit in the first hour. I don't really think so. I didn't I, think I was, it I was kind of getting into it because I, I liked, I liked the cinematography. Mm -hmm. I liked the performance. I liked, so like you said, the, the garbage strike and little little tidbits that I was picking up on. Yep. Another one, did you realize the comedy club that uh, the Joker was at was Pogo's? John I, Wayne Gacy? You know, I think I saw that. <laughs> Your mind is blown. Like Holy shit. In, in a review. That, yeah, that was fucking John Wayne Gacy's clown. Was that was John clown. Wayne Gacy's clown name. Yeah, they named like, the club after John oh, Wayne Gacy. So they they. Shit. These two, like I said, Joaquin Phoenix and Todd Phillips, yep. they knew what the fuck they were doing. Oh, yeah. And I, I remember Warner Brothers was sitting on this movie for a long time like, we got this. We got, wait till you see this shit. We got this. They knew. They fucking knew this was going to nail it. In the words of another great Joker, wait till they get a load of me. I mean, that's that's basically the way it was. It was like, oof, this movie was just, it came out at the right time, like I said, because everybody's so like, Oh, the MCU, and you know, and like I said, man, I cover the MCU a lot on my channel, and, and I do enjoy it. But this, to me, like, just beat the brakes off of all the MCU movies I, I've. Oh, watched. we we mentioned this, dude. That that DC did in fact beat Marvel on the the villain origin story. Oh God, yeah. 
There's so oh. many times where they could have done, you know, and everybody's like, well, it was Thanos. I'm like, fuck you. Thanos was set up over a period of movies. It, it, yeah. By the time you got to Avengers, it wasn't called Thanos in, or, or Infinity War. Yeah. It was Avengers Infinity War. That shit yep. don't fucking count. I'm no. so sick of that argument. This was nope. a, the villain as a protagonist did not make him a hero. No, he was no, definitely unhinged. And that's what the whole message, of, the whole message of the movie, at least from the message that I got was this guy is a product of society. You know, yeah. it, society created this monster. And I think that's why people really are freaked out by this. Cause it's like, you're telling, you're telling society that the society's problems is society's fault. Oh, wow. What a concept. That's because that is the case. And that's what this movie's message was. The Joker yep. was a product of society's failure. You know, the, the breakdown of, of the, the institutions that mm -hmm. were put in place. How many stories do you hear about people that are, that you know, these shootings and things like that? There is no way in hell that, that you can hold somebody against their will now. In, in, uh, uh, you, the only way you have to sentence them to uh, an institution. But other, other than that, to actually be institutionalized is all voluntary. Yeah. At any point, you can just say, oh, I'm done with this and walk out after yep. a certain age. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, they can't hold you. So, I mean, it's they like, can't. They, they, at one point, there was, I'm not saying bring back the sanitariums, but I am saying that there was a time when, when people that were unstable could get the treatment that they needed or yeah. at least be in some kind of environment. I'm not saying just lock them up and throw away the key because there was plenty of that. And that's why we, that's how we got to this point in the first place. But mm -hmm. there are ways like you can put them like in a, in a, a community environment, like a, a work community where they they're there on the weekends and they yeah. can still go out and see their families. They have to be back by a certain time. All that shit's gone. Yeah, this, only, movie, this movie was a statement about that. It was it really, like I said, this is a mental health character study more so than it was a comic book movie. And yes. Kudos to them. Kudos to them. For they doing managed that to way. do both. They, they managed mm -hmm. to, to not be so comic booky to the point to where it, it's like, you know, because I was waiting for those moments and mm. I was refreshingly, they weren't there. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it would have been so easy for them to do that right down to the guy's makeup. You know what I mean? Yep. Even that was a slight variation on it was just enough to where it evokes Joker, but it doesn't look like he's trying to copy something from another movie. Yeah. Or God forbid, be a, a, a Juggaloo Joker. <laughs> No, we're, no we're juggalos. Gonna, we, we won't speak about that one right no. now, but but yeah, th this this one here was, it, you know, yeah, it made a statement. And also a big spoiler surprise. I thought for sure that Joaquin Phoenix was going to get gunned down in some horrible fashion. Nope. They lock his ass up at, at, at Arkham Asylum. Well, we still got the scene in the police car. That's the wow. police, that police car scene. All the rioting and everything going around. Yep. The, oh God, he puts that. Oh, on so his, good. Like, oh, oh yes. I'm like, there's your Oscar yeah. right there. And you know he's not gonna fucking get the Oscar for this because no. this, this this movie is his deemed to be dangerous, you know. Even though that was a fantastic fucking performance, just right down to the angle. That and then the, the you know, the, the my other favorite scene right after the subway shooting, when he just kind of walks into the bathroom, he just kind of does this little Watusi kind of thing mm -hmm. and that's when he's he's turning into the Joker right there. You know? His dancing throughout that movie when he was doing when they played the Hey song, I was like, that could not fit any better right here. Like that could not fit any better. And yeah, man, his like his dance coming down the stairs and everything, and oh, dude, it was just it was great. Like now that that scene that I, I was wishing they would have left out is is that the scene in the trailer where he says, "Hey, Murray, when you introduce me, mm. can you call me Joker?" They should have left that out of the trailer, man. Yeah. That should have been a big reveal. Because yep. that, that's one of those moments where it's like, that is so fucking great. But you've already seen it so many times that when it does happen, it doesn't leave an impact on you. They do that a lot in movie trailers, and it yeah. bugs the shit out of me. Yeah, that was something that we that sh this should have been saved for the uh, for the cinema crowds. It really should have. Um, yeah, it, because it just it worked. Let's see what's out. Uh, Rock and Roll Part 2 by Gary Glitter. A known book about elves title. <laughs> uh. Did I miss a super chat? 
<laughs> yeah, the, the, it hasn't come through on the main one yet. I just I have, oh, a, I, okay, I have the browser okay. open on my phone, gotcha. so they they come through a little bit quicker on the mobile one. Oh, there it is. Here. There okay. it is, right there. <laughs> It's like, is my thingy not working? Am I frozen? Yeah. Nope. Nope. You're good. Yeah. That that was good too. And, and didn't uh, Gary Glitter actually uh, go down as a pedophile at one point? Yeah. Yeah. And that was another big knock. They but were I mean, that that song has become like a a, a, a sports staple at this yep. point. I mean, <laughs> yep. you can't go to a. That's actually one of the jock jams. Remember? It remember, is. Remember Absolutely. that was some shit. Jock, jock jam. jams. <laughs> Yep, for the ESPN. I was working for Sam Goody when we were selling that. Everybody had to have Jock Jams. Man, yep. that was a great seller. And that was oh, that dude. was I think that was on the first volume. Was was uh, mm -hmm. right next to We Will Rock You. Yep, Gary, Gary Glitter's Rock and Roll. But yeah, that scene was, was perfect. It yeah, was that, the, just the the whole thing down the stairs. It's like he's free at this point. It's like it, he's living he's living his, his life like this is his last day on earth. And he's gonna make it count. Yep. he's celebrating. You know, it's like he's gotten rid of. Almost all the people that have done all the wrong is like, speaking of getting rid of the wrong, did you think he was going to kill his mother? I did not. I, I was did. shocked, man. Hey, he's, he's, saying, about that. Yeah. he's saying that speech right as he's doing it. It's like, I thought that, that my life was a tragedy. Now I'm realizing it's a comedy. <laughs> yep. He's shoving the pillow over her face. I was like, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, fuck. Well, and there was people down in front that were doing the same thing. They're just like, oh, Oh, it was just, I was, I don't know what was more freaked out. Just my reaction to that or the watching the people down in the front have their mm -hmm. reaction. I usually sit in the back of the theater when I go to the movies because I want to see crowd yep. reactions when I do stuff. And, I, and it's, it's like half of the fun for me. Yeah, the people down front to the right, they were just like, oh, no. Oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, God, it, it, but like after he found those medical, after he got the medical records for his mom and found out, you know, he not. It wasn't so much the fact that he was adopted. Excuse me. It was the fact of what he let, ha what she let happen to him, is I think why he was like, okay, that's it, bitch. You're 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 now, going. Just so I get it straight. Night. Just so I get it straight, because I, I got a little muddle in the, in that in that bit right there when they were revealing mm -hmm. it, because there was just so much going on. Yeah. So she adopted him. Why? Because she abandoned another kid and thought that that was her child. Is that what happened, or am I getting that backwards? I think she just adopted him. I don't know if she, that she abandoned. I, I so can't. she just because I remember there being something in in the because is that they don't let you read that for a really long time. Yeah, kind of like what it just say? kind of flipped through. It really I just quick. remember seeing something about abandonment, and I'm like, so did she abandon Joaquin Phoenix, or did she abandon another child and then adopt Joaquin Phoenix? I'm assuming that she abandoned Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. I believe that's what it was. Um, but yeah, when he, when he, you, you know, you, so he you, got taken away for a period of time from, her. I believe so. Okay. I believe so. So at one point he had no parental guidance because Thomas Wayne was talking about his mom's mental illness. And, you know, he's the one that told, you know, uh, Arthur that his mom had issues and they were never together to help substantiate her delusion of having Thomas's son. That's what it was. Okay. That, that's, yeah. that, that's what I, th I, I just want to make sure I got that straight. Cause yep. sometimes we, you know, you see th this is one of those movies that, that definitely has some, some repeat viewing factor to oh, it. Yeah. You know, like I, I, I'll, I'll definitely be buying this one on Blu-ray and yes. watching it again. Yeah. I, I'd like to say I'd go back and see it again, but like I just told you guys, it's a pain in the ass for me to get to the theater yeah. as it is. It, when it goes digital, I'll probably, I, I'll want to like immediately watch it mm -hmm. again just to see if there's any, any parts that I missed. This is, this is one of those you want to go back and see it again. I mean, if I, if I had to give this a score, um, well, before I give the score, I think the only thing that I can find any fault in this movie with is that I wish that some of the other characters in this movie might have had a little bit more of a, of a substantial role because yeah. I would say 70% of this movie is Joaquin Phoenix. However, the performance by Joaquin Phoenix is so fucking good that I can overlook all that other stuff. I have to give this bitch five out of five cheese curds. Oh, you go five. See, I, I'm, I'm I'm going five. Yeah, I have to go five because th th this is this this couple last couple of months has been really exciting for movies mm -hmm. because I'm starting to see a change in the culture war. I'm starting to see yeah. audiences are deciding what they like and yep. not listening to critics. Yeah. There, and if anything else, when you when you put all of the backlash on this movie, you just help the box office more. They like, did. I want it because there there were actually old people in the theater when I was there, and I kept looking over to see what their reactions were. They didn't leave. 
Nobody nope. got up and left the movie. Everybody Same. that went into the theater stayed through the whole thing. And I don't remember them going, oh, at the end of it. Because there was a couple of minor groans when I went to see Rambo. Uh-huh. Um, but, you know, like, well, that there that, that was a movie. You know, and there was a couple yeah. of groans on It Chapter 2, but I don't remember any groans post-Joker. And a couple, no. even, a couple people even stayed for the credits, including yours truly. I wasn't doing the pee-pee dance like I usually do. I see I was and I knew there was no post credit scene so I'm like we're leaving. Yeah, uh, but, you yeah. know norm- normally I'll sit through the credits but yeah I was like there I stayed there. part of the credits but then I, I remember Fatal J telling me is like there's no post credit scene I'm like thank you this movie went out of its way to ditch that Marvel. Yep. I I would definitely have to say and I, and I wasn't I didn't have it build up in my mind for this movie to be one of my favorites of the year but it's definitely up there. I, I'd say yeah. This one and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I'm glad that movies like that are doing so well mm-hmm. at the box office. It shows that people have a desire to see movies that make them feel that don't follow a, 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 a very watered down, stupid, stupefied formula treating their audience. I think audiences are tired of being treated like children and they want to yeah. have something that makes them feel now this joker movie have i seen this done in other movies before absolutely but i don't have a problem with that being a comic book movie comic book movies are re- uh, are based on pop culture so it makes sense for them to to borrow elements from pop culture to make their story and i think this movie did it in such a way to where you know it did a really good job of putting out a version of that that we've seen before but doing it well enough that i like to come back for seconds yeah, absolutely, man. This is uh I would go see it again tonight. Um, but Walking Dead's on and I have to, it's Sunday, so I have to watch Batwhammon tonight. Oh uh, you you are stunning and brave, Pete. I tell you, man. And that you know, and that's uh you know, we talked about uh the shift in entertainment and you know, audiences being able to, you know, say this is I like this, you know, more so than being told what to like. And this this film was called problematic by the critics. And yet they're lauding a show like Batwoman, you know, which is, it's not a good show. It's, it's and in my review, um, which like I said, I took three and a half hours to write. I did not once knock the fact that Ruby Rose was a lesbian or, you know, in the show, Kate Kane or anything like that. Cause I didn't care. It didn't matter. The show was just objectively bad. It was a bad right. episode. It you was d- you didn't have written. a good story to hang it on. It, no. it, it, it's okay to have, I mean, I'm not saying that diversion, you know, in, in, diver, diver, I can't talk anymore. Diversity and inclusion. Diversity and inclusion are not important things. They absolutely are, yeah. but you have to you have to be able to to base a story around it yep. that's interesting for people to be interested in those other things as well. You know what I mean? You you have yeah. to you have to have a good story to hang it on. And in so many times in the past couple of years have we seen that that becomes the priority over story. It just mm-hmm. just to simply have these characters Box and have jacket. them hit hit all these check boxes yep. and then not have any kind of good compelling story. Joker has a great story. I mean, yes. it, it's really yeah. good. Is it better than the dark Knight? No, it's mm-hmm. not. All right. I, I will not say that, but it's definitely, it, it gets pretty close. Okay. It, 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 it's similar in the fact to where this didn't really have to be a movie about Joker. This could have been a movie about Joaquin Phoenix or shakes the clown. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, yep. it, it would have worked. All right. It, it just, it was just a, a well string strung together, bunch of ideas that work for me and, and it, it makes me excited that, that these that these movies are doing better you, you you see the reviews critic score audience score you know and and at the end of the day the audience score is what what gets these movies made yeah it's not the critics studios don't give a shit about the critics but it nope. also tells you something too when this when this movie got the highest award at Cannes film festival only to come over here in the west and be deemed as problematic it just goes to show you how Western these problems are. You know, yep. it, it's it's unfortunate, but at the end of the day, this movie still won. It still came out as it, it, the victor. It, it, it's mm. killing it at the box office. I think people are going to go back, like, like us, people are going to go back and see it again. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm anxious to see what the drop-off numbers are going to be. I'll, I'll probably cover that in another video mm. at some point on my channel. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Did we hit everything? I think so. Um, the ending of the movie, the last scene with the therapist in the hospital, though, um, there's been some speculation whether that was real or whether that was a dream or, you know, kind of like a delusion. I, I think that was real. The only the only um, uh, kind of hang up I had with that was now this man just shot and killed a talk show host on national television. They are not they, they would have him in a room alone. They would. 
with a, with a therapist, but he would be handcuffed and shackled to that table um, even in that time. And there would probably be two at least orderlies in the room with him and that therapist. I do not believe they would have left a man like that alone, that violent. Uh, that might also kind of allude to did that happen or didn't it? Because like you said, in, 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 a, in a perfect world, he'd, he'd have been... They'd have had him all Hannibal Lecter with the fucking yep. cage on his face and yeah, oh, behind yeah. plexiglass and shit. Hello, Clary. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I, and I, I you want if and there's been some rumors that they're that they might do another movie. Now, mm. how do you feel about that? If they did another movie like this, how, how would you do it? And how do you feel about them actually doing it? Because don't you feel like at this point making another one of these just kind of kind of uh, soils it, like makes it a little less effective. I do. I really do because I don't think you need to expand upon this any further. This is a brilliant tour de force standalone piece that can survive on its own merit and, and it's it's resolved itself of its own volition. You had one movie and you knocked it out of the park. Don't sully that by going, you know, like, oh, well, we can go back and we can do no 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 no. No, 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 no. If this this do... is where Hollywood always screws up. It's like they they see uh yep. a, a Dollar something, signs. yeah. That's they it. see something may uh, be a success, and then they immediately want to copy it rather than understand what parts of that worked, and then try to to replicate that that feeling with something different. That's what they used to do in Hollywood. Now it's just like, oh, Joker made a shitload of money, so we have to make fifteen fucking Joker movies like right away, like film them all back to back. And Joaquin Phoenix has to be in all of them. No. Uh, Salvador mentioned earlier, says, I would love to see a Mr. Freeze movie done the same way, called The Long Winter, about him struggling with hospitals and insurances, so her turns to crime uh, to save his wife, like Breaking Bad. Absolutely. That's something mm -hmm. that, and I think that's where DC is going to come out on top of Marvel by making independent movies like this. Joker was made for a very low budget. And it, yeah, it, it, it it's, it's profitable. And in, in how many times have we said, lower these fucking budgets, force directors to have to to have a vision to work within the constraints of their budget that's when true art is made even the first star wars movie he was he was under uh, a budget a strict budget he was mm -hmm. under time constraints and that's why that movie came out as well as it did it wasn't just the vision alone it was him having to work within those constraints jaws made with the same thing yeah. he had a shark that didn't work so he had to invent a way to use music to signal this is where the shark is going to come and eat your ass. And every time it works, you know it's coming. The tension is there. He mm -hmm. was working within it constraints. Nowadays, you could just have that fucking shark CGI rip up out of the water and yeah. you know d fucking eat a plane in half and then go right back down. You know it'd be super easy for them to do that. But would it be as effective? Absolutely not. No, no. And that's that's like I said, the grounded nature and the practical effects in this film are what made it so perfect in my eyes and like, i don't remember any cg in this movie no there, i don't there. think there was really i mean in, they in had... fact that that scene at the end that we were talking about where he's you know they, they they have the he's in the ambulance or he's in the he's in the cop car and then the ambulance crashes into him then they pull him out of the cop car lay him down mm. then he kind of slowly stands up and he kind of takes the blood yep. and goes up like this and everybody's applauding him and shit and there's just fucking anarchy everywhere fire in the streets and then uh <laughs> That's where we see what happened to Batman's parents. Yep. And How'd I you feel I about that. I didn't mind it. It wasn't it wasn't too focused on. It was kind of a, you know, a quick It's uh, just to remind you that yeah, this is definitely that universe cuz some yep. people speculated that this movie was going to get made. Somebody look at Warner Brothers looked at the script and says, "Hey, how about we change these things to be a Joker origin story?" Yeah. Which is I, possible, but that's I, fine. I mean, yep. this is how good movies get made sometimes. You make a few little plot tweaks, and, you know, Alien was originally supposed to be a low-budget Roger Corman movie. Huh. And it's funny, to this day, still the best Fantastic Four right? movie we have is the Roger Corman version that's on YouTube, for, which we'll be watching soon. <laughs> no, um, but but the, the, the original Alien uh, yeah. by, by Fox was, was supposed to be a low-budget science fiction movie, and they actually gave it to Ridley Scott. And as Ridley Scott came up with more ideas, he got a bigger budget. And that's how we came up with that. Yeah. What's now known as sci-fi horror. He actually invented that fucking genre by doing this. So they threw a few more dollars his way, but, but the original alien movie was still a low budget movie in, yeah. in, you know, it, you don't have not everything has to have a $160 million plus budget. No, 
No, it does not. And to me, that with uh, reshoots. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, we could we could do without like the uh, the Disney style Rogue One reshoots and all that. No, man, this was uh, this was done really well. Um, I, I like I said, there's there's little to no CG in it, which was perfect. Uh, it was grounded and based in reality. Uh, it was gritty. It captured and encapsulated that time period perfectly. Um, and just an overall brilliant, brilliant character study of mental illness and the external effects that they, the, the, uh, the external factors that play into the development of the snowball effect of the descent into madness and him becoming the Joker. I remember Fatal Jay telling us when he was on our, our stream, he said, uh, he says, you're going to feel like you're going mad with him. And I, I think that that was kind of like the ending was slightly ambiguous, which was good. Yeah. I like movies like that. Uh, most, you know, my favorite director ever is John Carpenter. Mm -hmm. John Carpenter is not famous for having uh, happy endings. No. His movies do not ever have happy endings at yeah. all. And uh, he, he makes endings that make you think about the movie after you've left mm -hmm. the movie theater. This was yeah. one of those. I All the way home, all I could think about was this movie and the rest of that night and was thinking about it again the next day. That's what you want when you go and spend, yeah. you know, several bucks on a movie theater uh ticket you know you you want to feel like that you want to be thinking about that movie long after you left theater if you've forgotten about it halfway on the ride home you didn't see something that left an impact on you that's what i hope is going to happen when i go see charlie's angels <laughs> <laughs> because that is the next movie i get to go see is charlie's angels you know it would have been oh. so easy for us you know if, if we were franchise worshipers i'd be like yeah it's a Terminator movie. It's going to be good. I, I love it because it's a Terminator movie. And if I don't support it, they won't make any more Terminator movies. No, at any point. I mean, I, I could have said that with Star Wars. No, uh -huh. I want good Star Wars. Yep. People think I'm nuts when I say I don't want just more Star Wars. I want good Star Wars. If there's no good Star Wars, I don't want any Star Wars. Yep. That's how I am with all movies. I yes. want I want more shit like Joker. And quality I don't mean the Joker quantity. was shit. I want quality over quantity. If DC is going to make more movies like this, uh, rooted in reality, where mm. the, this is the second time they've done this, where they've rooted something in reality and, and they've they've come out the the successful. You know, they, they did yeah. this with Batman. Now they're doing it with Joker. There's plenty of characters within that DC universe that they can do this with. Yeah. You know, and, and again, all the movies that I mentioned, you know, Once Upon a Time Hollywood, Joker. Movies that have story over checkboxes. Yes. You know, I don't yes. at any point feel like when I was watching Joker that checkboxes were being ticked. No, no, it was, it was never. Yeah. It, it was never forced or, you know, like I said, there was no heavy handedness or ham fisted stuff in there. Mm -hmm. It was just, it was a solid origin story with a, a cohesive cast and the environment that it was in. You could see, you could see kind of like in the, in the people around the diversity you know, in, in the right. denizens of the city, which is what you needed because those That's people... That's why I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned it. It's like, yes, there is diversity in Joker, but it's not like, see, we got diversity. Yep. Go us. Yep. Myself on the back. No, it, it, it works within the story. It was organic. That was yes. it. it Na it's organic. Natural, natural. Yeah. Natural. And, and people people knock when, when, when guys like us say that, well, we like the organic diversity because they think that's like some coded language. And because it doesn't not. feel like you're pandering to a crowd of people. You're, you're, Thank you're you. doing things in, in, in make you're, you're, you're entertaining people yes. in a natural form. You know, yep. I just got done watching the greatest showman last night. And there was that <sighs> one line in there where that, where the, the, the news reporter is just telling PT Barnum, he's like, Another critic would have said that that you're actually, uh, you know, progressing humanity or something like that for having mm -hmm. all these freaks out on stage, and and letting them all be the stars. You know, yep. it's it's like that was a great quote. It was. It that really was a great was. quote, and and he did it in such a way to where you know it's like you know he he kind of helped them out of, out of the did. slump that they were stuck in. He might not have been a great person, yeah. but he, he at one point he had good intentions and he did yep. help those people out. You know, and and eventually people noticed him for that. You know, mm -hmm. so. That's all we're saying. It it worked within that story. Yep. And you ain't and gonna get a more diverse cast than that. No, you know? and that's how it should be. That's right. how that's that's how it should have been. Um, and it should be an entertainment, man. So yeah, this like I said, I, I can easily I can I can I can concur, and not just because you did, but I can truly say that last night I was blown away by this movie, and I will go five out of five on this. Five this out is, of five as well. I, all right. I, I, I have trouble doing that with a lot of movies. I do too. I don't um, like to be I don't like to be as is throwing five out of five no. away. But I tell you right no. now, man, it's an exciting time because we had such a lackluster summer yep. of bad entertainment, and it's ending on an up note. And I think that 
dare I say fall is the new summer. I used to look forward to summer movies. Summer blockbusters and all it's, that. It's starting to feel like the blockbusters are amusement park rides, like right down yeah. to the 3D glasses and the seats moving around. They're literally yeah. becoming mo movie movie rides. They're not fun movies to necessarily watch. It's something you take your kid to see to get out of the heat for sure. Yep. But you want to see the good movies, you wait till September, October. That's when the stuff that daddy wants to go see comes out, right? True so, that. True that. If they want to keep that trend going, I'm okay with it. I'll just stay yeah. home in the summertime in my nice air conditioning, get caught up with all the shit I didn't watch last year, and I'll go out in the fall. If you put good stuff in the movie theaters, I will go get off my ass and make yep. a point to go out and see that stuff. Well, yeah, not like, just a review on my channel, but because I want to go I see, it. see it. Yep. Yeah, Joker was not something that, that I had committed to do. You know, it's, it's not like me going to see Dark Fate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Charlie's go, Angels. Yeah, like you so going we got to that see deal. Charlie's Angels. Yeah, we're, we're doing that for our channels. But I don't want to fucking see that movie. We don't. Watched, we don't want to see those movies because they're they're not. They don't look good to us at all. Like I none of the, the marketing two. behind Terminator looks remotely good at all. So it, I it, will say the new movie with Mackenzie Davis, uh, The Turning. I think yeah. it is. Yeah, that looked good. That, that looks good. good. And yeah. God, she is just, she's a beautiful woman. Oh, yeah. Like, all yeah. the heat she caught for what she looks like in Terminator Dark Fate. And no. I say this as a guy who appreciates like ultra fit women. It's the haircut. We it's have to, haircut. we have to let it be known on this channel that we don't, we don't hate actors and actresses. Okay. No. We just, we just hate the product that they're in. Yes. And if we make a crack about it, then it's just that it's that we're not going to attack yeah. their entire body of work. No. We're not going to go Kelly Marie Tran and bullshit them <laughs> off of fucking Instagram or whatever yeah, it is no. he accuse us of doing. No, we man, don't do no. that shit. We, nope. we know like the a... difference between the the actor and the body of work because you know? we're, we have co we have we have cognitive skills and we can differentiate between fantasy and reality. And that's <sighs> and I always I always say that about Ray from Star Wars. I'm like I, I think Daisy Ridley is is seems like a sweet, I think she's adorable, pretty cool. yeah. adorable human being, and she just seems really cool. I've watched multiple interviews with her, and she just seems like a really bubbly, fun person. And she's kind of like she's kind of got a vulgar mouth um, away from like the main, which is kind of funny to think about but yeah it's just her character's bad it's poorly written so yeah. it, it's not it's not a brie larson case it, where it, 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 where it, she it, just attacked so many times this, this lately where we've seen writing it's just just something that's well written you know it, yep. it, it's like it, a lot of people used to to rip on quentin tarantino because they say well all he did was rip off martin scorsese well what's martin scorsese done lately and also if you're going to take you know Movies have been done like that for years. Everybody rips off of somebody. I mean, even George Lucas mm -hmm. used to rip off all the old serials that used to come out before movies yep. back when he was a kid. That's all he's doing is making big cinematic versions of those, and he made a whole mm -hmm. fucking career on it. So as long as you do it well and do it successfully, J.J. Abrams ripped off of Steven Spielberg. He's made a fortune doing that too. As long as you do it well... Maybe that wasn't a good example, but they just need to. Oh, JJ has made a fortune off it, but he needs to it. stop. Yeah, he's made it. He's made a fortune doing it, but yeah, we we know him as Steven Spielberg Dollar General version. You know? Oh yeah, but uh, you know we we want more entertainment like Joker. I want to see more stuff like that yes. come out. I'm glad that that this movie. I'm actually glad that the movie was deemed as dangerous because it makes a statement of itself. It 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 just goes to prove that everybody that got upset about this made a whole lot out of nothing. They made a mountain out of a molehill. Made a mountain out of a molehill, and you know what? In spite of all of its bad press, did well anyway. So it kind of goes to prove that people have just about had enough of the shell media. Yeah. Yep. It was. Yeah, it was great. So I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and yeah, like I said, I'm, I, I I'm gonna buy this one on Blu-ray when it comes out. This is definitely one I'll buy. Faux show. Anyways, I think that's a good. This is probably a good place to wrap it up. Uh, I don't have any other questions in the comment section, but uh, this is going to be uploaded to Pete's channel at the place to be reviews. I will leave a link in the description. Make sure you click on that. And uh, I'm still trying to get some kind of a regular show on this channel, but also Pete, why don't you go ahead and plug that horror at the unicorn store party that I'm going oh. to be a part of? Oh. <laughs> Saturday night, we Monica, my co-host, drew we drew out of a hat for our first watch party back in August. We haven't had the time to do it yet. We've been, as you know, I put out a lot of content, so my weekends are very precious to me, and I get to spend time with my family. Uh, I've done watch parties on other channels, but you know they're they're sparse and here and there, which I'm all right with. 
Uh, this Saturday night, I'm going to be home alone, left to my own devices. So we are going to watch Unicorn Store on my channel at 8 p.m. That's on Netflix. If you have Netflix, um, if you don't, you can always. Uh, I know you. Somebody's. You've got a friend or a family member that you're bootlegging their password off of, and you're like the fourth person on the account. Like me, I'm the fourth person on the Netflix account. Um, you can you can catch it there, unfortunately, and uh, join us for that. But but please. Don't think that I am just going to be a one-off and leave you with Unicorn Store. I'm not going to pump and dump you with Unicorn Store. No, 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 my friends. Palette cleansing afterwards. Clive Barker's 1987 classic, one of my personal favorite horror movies. Hellraiser. We'll be mine we'll be too, watching buddy. That. That's mine that's too. on uh, that's free on YouTube. I'll provide a link to that. Uh, like I said, we're going to take about a 20 minute break in between the movies, and uh, because I'll need to stretch my legs and uh, PB probably, break, PB break. Probably, like, guys, got to have our PB breaks. Kind of like what I'm doing right now because I'm two pots of coffee in and a cup and a Yeti <laughs> cup of water during this review. <laughs> so I've been kind of sitting here. If you've noticed me dancing around a little bit, but yeah, so uh, we're going to start 8 p.m. Eastern time for uh, Unicorn Store and. About 20 minutes after the font, because I think that's only about an hour, hour and 20 minutes, something like that. I haven't really checked the runtime. But so we'll probably start just a shade before 10 p.m. on uh, Hellraiser. And I'll and have Hellraiser is uh, not too terribly long either because no. it was made back when in the 90s when both most movies were about 90 minutes long. I think it was. It was about 90 minutes long. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Yep. So we'll be doing that. Um and uh, there's uh, there'll be links on the place to be review page. Uh, Groove will probably throw it up on his page. It'll be in my group, the official uh, place to be reviews fan page, and probably in Raiders of the Lost Flicks, the official Raiders of the Lost Flicks fan page as well. So you can find the links there. Uh, yeah, and uh, there's no podcast tomorrow night on my channel. I want to uh, say that real quick. Um, Yay, sleepy time. No. Yes, the uh, <laughs> the Detroit Lions are my team. I do I do like some sports ball. And especially just football, basically. And my Yankees are in the playoffs right now. They're going to go to the ALDS and probably win the World Series. But hey, that's just what we do. Uh, I, I that's like just sports, what the Yankees sports do. Sports puck, and these yep. fuckers haven't won a game yet. So, so yeah, we'll be uh, we're taking tomorrow night off the podcast, but we'll be back and better than ever on Wednesday night. You're going to get videos all week. Relax, I'm not leaving. You're going to get videos all week. You'll have uh, the podcast on Wednesday night, and uh, we'll do uh, my morning show. I'm just going to do a regular morning show on Tuesday. It's it'll be about last night, but there won't be a show to still have new topics uh, for the morning show on Tuesday and your regularly scheduled place to be reviews content all week. So watch party unicorn store. Finally next Saturday, 8 PM Eastern, the place to be reviews groove will be joining me for probably both movies. Um, I'm not sure. I know uh, Appalachian American is going to be on for unicorn store. And um, I, I think uh, Monica is going to be there for unicorn store. She won't watch Hellraiser with us, but she'll be there for unicorn. Well, store. we'll have some kind of a support team going on there. Cause we're going to need it. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. We need yeah all the support be, we can get. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. So that we've got that to look forward to this week and this weekend. So uh, yeah, this has been fun, man. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on. Oh, it's my uh, pleasure. I love doing stuff like man. this. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And also uh, I'm going to get myself back on track too. I, I did put out a video yesterday Probably not gonna put out anything else today because I'm I'm tired. I was up all night. My dog had a seizure and it lasted about you know ninety minutes. It was like two hours after I went to sleep. So I'm 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 dragging like pee yeah. doing the pee pee dance and I'm just kind of dragging myself through this review. But uh, I I am getting back on track. I had company last week, which is why some I didn't put out videos for a couple of days. I just didn't want to neglect my company. But I am getting back on track. I promise. So and yes, like Pete says, I will be on on his channel for that watch party uh, yep. looking forward to at least part of that so. <laughs> the second half you know <laughs> the, the second first half, half the, <laughs> the first half i don't know what i'm getting myself into but it, it whatever it is it's going to be interesting so oh, yeah. make sure you guys check out for that i after this uploads i will leave a link to his channel in the comment section so if you guys got a comment leave it down below yep. anyways this is the groovinator signing out you guys have yourselves a groovy day peace bye